Hello there, everyone. It's the happy hour. Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa, Kevin on a chair. That is why I, am. <laughs> I am Kevin on a chair. Hello. Uh, uh, having obliquely referenced mm -hmm. Kevin. Yes. Uh, and again, if you donate to me now, the money will not be going to me, it will be going to them, so whatever. Or you can just go to their website and give the money directly, whatever. That's entirely up to you. Anyway, so we're talking about um, the Arcadum, or Arcadum? Uh, Arcadum. Sexual, uh, yeah. well, sexual assault slash um, uh, harassment, harassment slash yeah. emotional manipulation and yeah. grooming. Which, as you can see there, I had to redact for the Twitch title purposes. That is, mm, yeah. two, that is two happy hours in a row. I've had to do that now. Yeah, we're gonna have a. We can also discuss the definition of grooming and its application here because I think it's appropriate. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, it's awful, right? Uh, the, I suppose the background is Arcadum. Uh, for those who don't know, is uh, or I suppose technically now was um, the leading Twitch D and D stream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were I don't you... follow Twitch okay. DM, but that's my understanding of it yeah. as well. Yeah, you had like a quarter of a million um, followers on Twitch. Yeah. He had multiple people working with and for him, a lot of them for free, contributing to the world that he had created. And yeah, it was um, he had introduced a lot of people to the game. Yeah. So uh, that's the kind of background for it. He's uh, a dude from America. Uh and he uh, used and abused his position of trust within the community, didn't I? Yes. Um, and I guess I should preface this by saying uh, that's the basic back. He, he abused his trust and he um, you know, kind of like he violated boundaries with people. We will go into it because we are going to be looking at the Twitter longers or the Twitter longs. I don't know which one is right. But ne technically neither. It's twit longer. Twit longer? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's just the first four yeah. letters. I told this to Kevin a couple of weeks ago. I'd gone down this sort of true crime legal in rabbit hole of uh, criminal psychology, mm. forensics, and all that stuff. Part of it was watching some videos where they analyze the chat logs of predators who are being, who have decoys. The, the perverted justice group has decoys in chat rooms. This is, you know, like 15 years ago. Looking for, you know, do, hanging out, pretending to be like 14 year old girl or 12 year old boy. And if men started talking to them, it turned into a sting. Uh, and I probably watched, I don't know, eight or nine of them. They're very difficult, but they're also, there's a pattern of psychology that goes along. Not every single predator does the same thing, but there are commonalities when you see how they operate generally. And after I started reading this, you told me about it, I don't know, three days ago. Yeah, I told I, you about this because I, I mean, I, I thought being a D&D &D person, this would be of interest to yourself. Yeah. Can you turn up my volume a little bit, please? Okay. Apparently, I'm, I'm, I'm quiet. Um, yeah, there you I, go. I went and read it, and I wrote back to Kevin within minutes. Oh, my God, this reads like a To Catch a Predator Stop it. chat log. Get some help. Because I saw the same kind of manipulation techniques being used by Arcadum that I saw in that with other predators whose works were analyzed. And I wanted to do this episode in particular and do it some sort of, you know, like do it justice, like go into this and have this conversation because it, I think it is important if I, I've never been manipulated like this. So if someone started to do this to me, I would extend to them a lot of trust because I wouldn't assume that they would be out to do that to me. And um, the problem with someone like Arcadum, who's very manipulative, is that he develops with people a real sense of connection and closeness. And so they become very emotionally torn because they care about him and he says he cares about them. But then he treats them in ways that they don't feel comfortable or violate some boundaries. Mm. And but they still care about him. And that is one of the things that he uses to try to yeah. then silence people later on. And understanding these manipulative techniques should hopefully like open your eyes to when you come across them or when a friend tells you about them if in a relationship they're having. Uh, Belvoir, to your question, uh, this is recent. This was like from the last uh, few days. This is, yeah, I think this, it all dropped a week ago yeah, at this, most. Well, yeah, this this post, the, the kind of amalgam of all the different bits and bobs is from four days ago. So, like, it's it's very recent, yeah. Um, uh, the I mean, the manipulation's been going on for quite some time. 
but like it's literally like one of the secret recordings that was made of him was from like the la uh, 29th of last month so like five days ago or whatever four days ago mm -hmm. so yeah um it's this yeah yeah this per well again for those late arriving this is a, a guy called arcadum who's who was i don't know if he's still going to remain so but was no, the, no, no, the no. leading we, we yeah, the fine. leading D and D uh uh, streamer slash dungeon master person for um, on Twitch. He had like a quarter of a million followers on Twitch, which is fucking massive. Mm -hmm. I mean, in YouTube terms, that would be millions, wouldn't it? Really? Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's he was a very big guy, uh, and yeah, it's bad. So uh, which one did you want to start with? It was. I actually wanted to start with Stir S T E R. I think his name yeah. is, and it's okay. it's not one of the women that who we will look to. But I I thought this was good because Stir knew Arcadum or knows him. They were friends for a long time and has an outside perspective and didn't know this was going on. Yeah. And I will say that overall, the community I've seen a handful of. I've watched basically as many videos on this as people have made. Yeah. I even watched the quartering one in the end which i will tell you about but um it's like you know 80 20 90 10 is in support of women the women coming forward okay so. good i'm gonna guess that the quartering was in the 10. honestly no really? so oh, okay. yes right okay so he started off as he would very skeptical blah 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 you can't take it i'm gonna hold withhold judgment and then he started reading into the twit longs twit longer and by the end, he had said the word cringe, yikes, bad spot, and not a good look. Wow. <laughs> Even so. So he was convinced of a thing, and that's the best he could come up with. Well, I think his mo he really moved the needle yeah. from, you're going to have to really show me this, and I'm going to, yeah. you know, a presumed innocence to be like, I'm going to wait to see what he says, but this is not a good look. Yeah. So yeah. even fucking Jeremy thought this was skeezy. Yeah. Okay, so um, do you want to read this? Uh, I, th um, I guess yeah, I can do the first one if you. I mean, I, d I really don't mind which way do you want to do. It. Do you want to do it uh, stanza it is by a stanza? Guy. Yeah, we can do it stanza by stanza. Okay, uh, well I'll, I'll go first. Then. Okay. Um, well I'll, 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 I'll if you are unsure, but this is what it's about. So that goes to the Reddit. Um, mm -hmm. Oop, oh, wrong, wrong one. That goes to this. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, I hate that I have to write this, but I think a lot of people will want to hear from me on the matter. I've been friends with Arcadum since before the beginning of his rise on Twitch, and done what I can to help him along his way. I've played in more of his games than anyone else, and he is grateful uh, for all that I've done to him, to, sorry, to help him achieve success. I'm somewhat torn between being there to support him and make sure he can make it through this okay, but also being too familiar with his behaviour several other twitlongers have described supporting him feels like becoming part of his statistical analysis on how many people he can keep closely so keep close solely for his own preservation when something dramatic happens in arcadum's life he would occasionally speak to me for advice or emotional support not unlike how others have described the situation but with the twist that i'm not a woman I was, however, aware that I was not the only person he'd go to for emotional support when he needed it. It seemed like he would make the rounds go one by one, go through the people he knew who he could talk to and have the same conversation with all of them in order to collect enough pity to momentarily feel better. I knew many of these people seemed to be women, something I was naive enough to infer be was because women may have just been easier and more receptive to talk to, talk about these problems with yeah, I am just going to briefly uh, change to it being the specific tab so that I can look at my OBS without it being oh, yeah. you reading. Apologies, <laughs> everyone. You. Small, uh, small yeah, issue Yeah, technical. There. Yeah. yeah <clears throat> so now I'm left with what was actually said and done. Hang on. Is that the right one? Yes. Sorry, uh, no, that is yeah. the right one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm left with what was actually uh, said and done when talking to those other people. I'm shocked to see how these similar conversations have a dark lining when uh, they were had with women he was attracted to and financially supporting. I think just to break in briefly, that is an aspect of this which is underappreciated. He's, he was mm -hmm. paying some of these women. Or Very, even like giving them some financial support to help with the work on the project. Yeah, and cr yeah. creepy um, boss behaviour, I suppose. 
Anyway, uh, continuing. I think it is a very bra sorry. I think it is very brave for them to speak up because I now fully understand how hard that can be. I know how hard he can be to confront. I have tried at times to have very simple conversations with him that confront some of his unrelated behaviour, which he immediately amps up to 100% pity, to the point where it is not worth engaging with any further. I once brought up how his reactions whilst DMing a D&D a game can cause a player to stop asking questions or encourage them to not bring up things they cared about because he would be incredulous at the idea that the player is accusing him of forgetting something which often was the case, and players brought things up less and less because of said reactions. He went to 100%. He said he should just stop running games and deserve nothing due to this slip-up. He capped it off with a group of messages that are quite poetic to this situation with hindsight. Do you want to have a look at that? Yeah, yeah, let's look at the whining. Because there's a pattern of mm. behaviours that we're going to see here. And he said, uh, You said I am very good at shutting people down, and this is fucking with me. Uh, because... Uh, that makes me out to be a supreme asshole. And if I am a supreme asshole, then I don't deserve the things I have because I never wanted to earn anything with dishonour. There's a lot of this pity baiting. Yeah, he's a he's a very... Uh, yeah, he's a very manipulative person. Yeah. yeah, and I can describe his pattern to you when we finish this letter up, how he reacts with women. Uh, so. Hang on. You scroll... Yep. I really wanted to see him work through this and not need so much validation, but it was an uphill battle. When seeking comfort for something his girlfriend had done, he neglected to mention all that he had done. I have been manipulated into comforting him for things he has knowingly instigated, along with many other people as he goes one by one tailoring the story to each person, all while leaving out the details that implicate him, which might have to lead to a form of self-reflection and improvement. And now you need my support again because some girl is making up stories about you. You had a large support net, larger support network than anyone I've ever known by a massive margin. You were shown the most profound empathy by so many people and it has never been enough. I've often caught myself feeling envious of how easily people are drawn into your charismatic circle, fueled by your need for sympathy and their willingness to publicly give it in order to keep you stable and content enough to keep going. I never liked it, but I hope you'd work through these issues after enough reassurance. I hope that one day you'd fully accept and internalize all this positivity that has been generously dumped on you by so many people. Accept yourself, your life, your circumstances, and all the people who believed in you. <clears throat> what you've actually done with all that good it will is absurd, all while acting like you had nobody on your side. You have so many people who were willing to help and listen, but you confused love and compassion with sex. That's the, the, the true point of it. <clears throat> You are still the arrogant person from your past that you hate. You are arrogant now to believe editing Discord messages in hindsight will do you any good. You are arrogant to think people didn't notice what you were doing. We all saw one piece of the puzzle, but haven't managed to put them together until now because we had faith in you, and you actively made sure people did not share puzzle pieces. I have always seen the subtlety of your manipulation, but I thought it was harmless. I can't support you this time, but I still hope you get better on your own. I'm sorry for everyone who this has affected. Yeah. So right. that's that's the kind of... That's one person's kind of uh, part of the puzzle, so to speak. Yeah. yeah, a friend who's watched him. So not this manipulation isn't just directed at women. It's something that is a pattern in his life. And now I'm going to play amateur psychologist. I'm going to tell you what I've seen from watching way too many hours of videos covering this and looking through the chat logs and everything else um, and things I know know about Arcadum's sexual preferences at least as it pertains to this situation so he's in a he was in a eight-year relationship with a woman Tiff she he, he sort of interchangeably will refer to her as his girlfriend his fiance and his wife I guess maybe common law wife but that doesn't really count in now Apparently, they were going through some bad time, some time around, around like last year, 2020. And the way he decided to cope 
is um, he was trying to find women that he could fap to. Yeah. But what he states is it he needs to sort of ha know them and have a connection with them for it to be really satisfying for him. So just watching porn or watching a cam girl isn't doesn't do it for him. Yeah. So what he was basically doing in his community was um, finding women showing up saying throwing a pity party oh i'm so lonely i'm so unattractive compliment baiting um just uh yeah all kinds of pity stuff and then basically moving things to a sexual topic yeah and you just see that pattern over and over yeah and i was just going to ask uh, answer a question he's uh, 32 years old this person yeah he's not like fucking xander doing this shit even though that was creepy too yeah. um the way he behaved but this is definitely a, a man of who's he was in the like the military and left he's he's seen the world he knows how these things things go uh yes indeed so um what was the Did next you, one you wanted to do again you know, like, I, I, I just made some suggestions and we think we agreed on a list um i guess so i wanted to do that one first but after that Probably the most complete one is Naomi's. It's, it would take the longest. The rest of them will be shorter by comparison. And Naomi's got a good head on her shoulders. She mm. like really shows herself to be a good person in her uh, conversations with him. Like, just yeah. generally someone who would be an awesome friend. Yeah. We've also got the uh, leaked audio between those two as well, if you want to should we apply that as well? Um, we probably we have to get through parts of uh, um, their interactions to set up the context for that mm. first, yeah. and okay. then we'll play the video. Okay, uh, right. So I wanted to show the tab again. Yes, please. Do, do, do. Hang on, that's not the right one. Same fifty-fifty on the paragraphs. I don't know if we're gonna do amateur theater on the chat logs. We haven't really discussed that, but yeah. I can go first this time. Go I can on, do then. like I can do like the first three. I'll go. Thank you for coming to read my story. Oh, this is also yes from Naomi. Yeah. I don't know if yep, yeah, that's her. Thank you for coming to read my story, watch my recordings, and hear my support to friends who are also struggling through worse problems with the same person. You all know I keep my nose out of drama as much as possible, but from what I've seen, some of my dearest friends have been treated so heinously over the past week and beyond that, the past two years, that I cannot stay silent any longer. I'm going to be concise with sharing my perspective alongside the evidence. It's been really hard trying to parse all of this and support the other women while also attending to a family member's funeral, and I've been in a perpetual cycle of breaking down and coping. I will do my best here, so forgive me if anything is worded poorly. If there's anything that needs clarification, I will address it. These are my experiences with Arcadum. Yeah. Um, okay. So narrative first, and then picks out one, one day out of nowhere? Because I think oh, okay. they give context. One day out of nowhere, Arcadum started venting about his domestic issues. Normally a fine and normal thing between friends, however, this is the kind of conversation that preceded a lot of what felt like pity baiting and pressuring to engage in lewd behaviour with me, and also uh, all of the other girls that are speaking out. More on this below. Right, so... Oop. He's on the screen. There we go. Should I be Naomi? Yeah. Oh, hang on. So excited! That I just can't hide it. I have a loop of those two lines for like two minutes straight as an alert. You got me on those questions in the last message though, right? I'm going to put in a bit of work uh, work off steam for something. Uh, we will be yes and for two days total. Two days have passed or we'll ble be in bleak for two days? Two days have passed. All right, thank you very much. And then she sends a pic. Mask of Shades. Hell yeah! Liasis is working on the final draft of the thing, so I'll have an alert for you tomorrow. Uh, feels really good, Manan. Tomorrow is going to be a good day. It so is. I feel like I have so much pressure on me right now. Uh, I feel pretty god about it. Uh, I just wish I didn't have all this negativity on me. Negativity? I'm also sorry, I'm in a call right now, so I can't super respond well, but I will after. Oh, okay, never mind. Feel free to send a message, though. I absolutely will get back to you. So, I think I'm done in this call soon. All right, I'm free to read and respond. 
is the negativity just pressure on yourself and that feeling of not being good enough or is it a f from something or someone external smiley so that's sad face because if you're happy with the pressure on you you'll uh, it, sorry because if you're happy with the pressure on you it'll ob it, it obviously is separate but there's negativity on you mostly the negativity i feel from home i guess i feel pretty frustrated most of the time when it's time to rest and relax Oh, hack, sad face. Is everything all right with Tiff? Is it family stuff? Uh, hang on. I scrolled down and I fucking lost it. Uh, oh, I can still see it. So, but... oh, oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, things between us haven't been uh, good lately. It's something that has been going on for about a year, pretty much ever since you basically fooled around on me. Hmm. Uh, there is a lot of history in it, and to be honest, I've been struggling with happiness for a while. And then we've okay. got the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, for a while. Sorry, that's a lot to dump on you. No, it's very understandable. It's also the message in my right now and brain. No, but why is clip that? Go away, clip that. <laughs> I why don't is... know what clip that is. You're annoying. Uh, anyway. Uh, sorry, uh, it's just on my screen. Is that showing up for everyone? No, it's just on it's... my screen. That's very um, peculiar. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Technical nonsense that doesn't really make any difference. Uh, yeah, we'll just read it out for you anyway. You can go back and check these you're on. Uh, so, da, 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 uh, uh, that's a very, it really sucks hard thing. You'll definitely do a good job of hiding it, whether that's for stream or not, but it doesn't sound healthy. Have you been communicating well? Uh, it's a lot to catch up on, but essentially she does, and that's what the clip thing is, uh, want to change or do, so it doesn't want to change or do anything, and yet. Another has gone by and she hasn't married me. Mm. So I am pretty distraught by it. Are you engaged? I honestly thought you are. You, I thought you were married, honestly. Uh, negative. We, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Negative. We have been engaged for eight years. Oh, wow. That's a very long time. I'm sure that's fr that frustration keeps building too, sad face. Was her fooling around very serious? Seven years into an engagement, doing that, it's pretty shitty. I'm sorry to hear that. It was up in the... Um, it was erotic role-playing. I learned that phrase from doing the research. Okay, okay. It was erotic role-playing in the living world. Which is a chat room. Okay. It's a, virtual, a VR chat room. Okay. That may not seem like much, but it broke our rule. And it really hurt me. No, if a boundary is crossed, a bound, it's a boundary crossed. Even people in open relationships have boundaries, like not being with specific people. And you might think, well, if they can sleep with anyone, why is it so bad that they slept with that one person? That's trust you put down, lines of faith and respect. And if they're broken, that's a lot. But yeah, it's like I have been sad all the time. Shit, sad face. I was just telling the friend I was in the call with about your DMing, linked him our campaign and everything. And one of the things I said was that you've been a DM for so many years and the only two things in your heart has room for is D&D &D and Tiffany. I'm so sorry, man. If you ever need to vent, I'm happy to listen. I don't think I could offer much advice and I especially wouldn't want to give any unsolicited, but at least I could offer an ear. That's a very hard situation to be in. You deserve to be happy and it sucks that to not be on the same wavelength as your SO. That's significant other. Mm -hmm. I know that one. Anyway. Not to mention, she won't take care of her health problems, and even after I keep telling her, she just won't. Oh, jeez, are they serious? Yeah, they are, and it's like we get free health care because military, but she just keeps making excuses. That's absolutely ridiculous. Does she not value her health at all, her life? Also, unrelated, small image of updated nervy art. Leah says is in the process of sending me HD virgins. Virgins. Right? <laughs> virgins. <laughs> Very appropriate for D&D. <clears throat> so now it gets creepy. Yeah. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, the back, pa pa sorry, the black pantheon creeps in. Man, do you know what you're going to do about all this? It doesn't sound like a situation you can just leave hanging. It won't solve itself, but solving people's problems can be one of the hardest things. Uh, I have no other choice, really. I still care about her, but she, but man, she makes it hard to. You always have choices. Some of them are just sad and difficult. Some may require a different approach. 
all are exhausting in a situation where you really shouldn't have be having issues. You should be having happiness and love and support. Yeah, it's a lot to deal with right now. Uh, I am just trying to get my stream to the point where I can be proud of myself. Let me know if there is any ever anything I can do, dude. At the very least, you shouldn't have to shoulder the entire burden alone, and I will always promise confidentiality, of course. I'm going to get ready to stream right now, but if there's a need, I will make time. I will also say here, um, I don't mind her break of confidentiality in this case because she kept it confidential until she realized that he had been betraying herself and, like, a dozen other women or 20 other yeah. people. Yeah. So... Uh, and hopefully your crazy successful stream can be a source of great confidence, inner strength, and pride. Have a good stream. And hey, I... Oops, sorry, I lost... I, I mean it, all right? I know how hard shit like that can be and how desperate and lonely it can feel. When I was in a situation like that, friends definitely pulled me out of the hole I was in. You are most... You are a most... Hell, hell yeah, brother, pal. And if you gotta talk it out or you want company while working or whatever, if I'm awake, it'll happen strength oh hey before i start i was going to ask i was i plan on starting to go ham on my fitness tomorrow season two fresh star fresh workout and health ethic you want to join my pact yo how you doing today my friend uh doing okay D, &D starts in five minutes ah oh, sweet i will be there watching um your adventures well danka Hey man, my hands smell like smoke, ash, and ink, so I want to send this over before the campaign because it might be a pain in the ass to read in the moment. There's some picture. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for the... Okay, so that's them, like, setting up their relationship. Yeah. Okay. Oh, now. Yeah, so... Pint up. Okay. Uh, we had been discussing a recent stream Arkadam uh, did when he re suddenly started talking about how he's going through relationship problems, feeling unattractive, how he wants to relieve the pressure, which... Can you pause? Yeah. That is his code for ejaculation. Yeah. He, Whenever he yeah. says he wants to relieve the stress, he means he wants to ejaculate. Yeah. Just FYI. How he needs release and how he still wants to keep him being single out of the public eye. I was very quick to jump into the supportive homie role uh, because I didn't want didn't like where this was going i recommended that he share the fact that he's single with the world if he was so interested in finding a fuck buddy or partner but of course to this day he's still calling his girlfriend his wife it felt like an attempt to make me pity him to to the point of doing something with him this is what happened uh, with a lot of the other girls although for some it went further read their stories uh, but it didn't end here for me either okie dokie What's this? That's... Oh, that's just a proof that that's, that's him. So he's arcade okay. in 2006. <laughs> yeah, it was rare to hear him speak about some things yesterday. But again, I was only there for like five minutes. Had a hot day to run to and all. Omega lol. Jesus. Anyway, um, I can't sleep myself. I feel fucking miserable. Because of what you said, or rather the discussion you participated in? A little of that, but mostly just my relationship problems and going through this break. Oh shit, we never got to talk about that. I figured that was the problem that was getting you down a little while ago when you asked to chat. I just need to center the thing. Apologies. <clears throat> uh, we need to chat. Uh, yeah, I'm dealing with so much I feel like I'm going to crack. I remember you saying that there was room for two things in your heart, her and D&D. &D. If one of those things is wavering, a huge part of your emotional support system has taken a toll. If you need to take a break, everyone will understand or lessen your workload. If you're taking on more work than you can reasonably handle to try to bury yourself in it, it might actually happen. I'm just tired of feeling so alone, to be honest. Couple that with how unattractive I feel because of her lack of interest. And I am just miserable. That's so sad. I'm sorry. You shouldn't be feeling alone in a relationship. If you don't mind me asking, what's the current situation? The last time we talked, you guys were just working through some bad feelings after her infidelity, and that was quite a while ago. Well, she brought drugs from my father, whom I hate, lied to me about it, and when I confronted her, she hit me. So that is what I'm dealing with. Oh no, that's fucking awful. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I feel pretty fucking awful. Man, are drugs taking up her life right now? 
she's self-medicating for her bipolar disorder. Ah, uh, that doesn't seem like a good idea. Nope. And now I basically just sit around and unwanted in the prime of my goddamn life. I feel so ugly, man. That's a really tough one. Even more so with the bipolar disorder and taking drugs, but... Jesus, I hate this self-doubt. When you have your heart fixed on one person and they don't want you for whatever reason, it's easy to feel a lot of self-doubt. And then some. Have you considered parting ways, trying to find someone whose heart and body you can connect with, not years ago, but now? Well, we are on a break, but I doubt anyone would ever want me, man. That is such a multifaceted problem, you know? Because if you have a lot of self-doubt, you're probably not putting yourself out there. And a lot of the times, the feelings you have about yourself are very visible to others. But if you're primarily interested in women, even if your looks are a big concern, it's really important to note that so many women rate looks pretty damn low on an important scale. An emotional connection comes first, and someone that can make them laugh. Yeah. So all subjective thoughts aside, because beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and if you love yourself and carry yourself well, there will be people who will find you attractive as hell. Even if you think absolutely nothing of your looks, there are so many people you could potentially connect with. See, this is good friend stuff. And also, Wasn't she? She's I, a fucking amazing friend. Also, I think she uses the word stank at one point, which is <laughs> Hang on. Uh, connect with. There we go. Uh, I just want to be able to relax to, like, relieve this constant pressure. There you go. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I feel like I am being pressed in from all sides. In all honesty, though, I am still trying to stay positive. The stream is doing well. Really, the most important physical things are dressing in clean clothes that suit you, making sure you're clean and groomed, your teeth are clean, etc. Physical hygiene is way more important than looks, because if a person's stanky, it don't matter how good they look. Okay, it was stanky rather than stanky. <laughs> <There we go. clears> and, and that's good advice. Cleanliness is next to godliness, so... Uh, and it's something, not in, not in the dictionary though, don't look there. Uh, and it's something I earned. Well, I have nice hair, I think. And yes, of course, it's a totally natural human need. And you have a person from whom you've come to expect love, support, intimacy. It's suddenly being taken away in the worst ways, and that's an awful feeling. Yeah, it is. It's wonderful how well the stream is going, because you definitely do deserve it. And don't discount all of the court teening and crises of the past few months, those take a huge emotional toll on almost everyone, whether we notice it or not. There's a lot of human action, interactions going down the drain, so then you need it even more from the people you still have close to you. It's like your romantic and physical support batteries are at zero, so you can't expect yourself to be operating at 100% on this. It makes perfect sense. It's extremely reasonable in all your feelings about it. Yeah, that's true. For the first time ever, I actually want went to OnlyFans because someone from VR chat had one and I was thinking to myself like what it would be like to seek companionship and honestly I just don't think I could do it. I lost where we were in the... Uh, um... How come? Ah, thank you. Uh, line? All right. Um, how come? I don't know. I just need physical release but I also need to know the person so the anonymity of it is sort of self-defeating for me at least. Oh, I thought you were referring to seeking companionship as in looking for a new mate. But yeah, no, that absolutely makes sense Take it, talking about an anonymous connection like that. A lot of people on OnlyFans, most I think, are just digital anyway. Um, well, finding a... Can we start with mate? As a <laughs> any of fucking up. Well, finding a new mate would be a step further down the line. Right now I'm just, like, so stressed out and... I it's so weird to have like in the sentence and not punctuate it because it anyway. right right now i am just like so stressed out and lonely that i think i would just need something to help me get through the day to day but now that i say it out loud that seems pathetic and also a little creepy i don't know so he will put out like a sexual feeler and then yeah. down himself to give himself a way out in case he gets rejected and he knows he's being creepy like he's admitting that there yes but have you considered trying to connect with anybody in your community? Not viewers, but like anyone you consider a friend or someone who could be um, anyone you've worked with or played with. I'm sure a lot of people are just so aware that you have TIFF that they wouldn't even consider it, you know? Also, I don't know if you made the break. 
public knowledge, but a lot of people avoid situations like that too because they still want to respect both people in the break and don't want to get into something that sounds like it'll end when the break is over. It's not pathetic or creepy at all. It's an emotional and physical basic human need. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out that there was no break. He's lying. No, there was no break. He's lying. Nope. She uh, did uh, kick his ass out of the house and change the locks after these 20, after the first 10 dropped, though. That, yeah, I think is pretty reasonable as a reaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's not public, no. As for the break ending, I have no idea about that. I didn't want to, like, get backlash on her. As for someone that I know, I have no idea who would even be interested in me. Any woman, that is. I don't really... Hang on, is he suggesting he gets a lot of hint, gay interest? Hint. No, he's saying hint, hint. I don't even have an idea who would oh, be interested okay. in me any woman. And she's going back, oh, I'm interested in you. He's done this so many times, like yeah. basically compliment bait. Yeah. 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 Uh, any woman, that is. I don't really feel very valuable as a man right now. So there are some important steps that you would need to take to kind of get into the game, you know, unless you decide to just go out into the real world and try to meet people that are entirely outside of D&D. She is seeing these messages and she is sidestepping them. Yeah, she's giving you nothing, pal. Nothing, no, she's getting nothing back in return. Yeah. So I guess, oh, all right. This is the, the last realize of these four. Yeah. yeah. Also, when, you... oh, Kalinka, Kalinka, because apparently she's of Russian extraction or something. So that's, yeah. It's a thing. I, I thought it was a and d thing. I was wrong. Okay. Then it's a non-issue because nobody knows about you or Tiff. But it all depends on how you want to proceed, right? Because if you've been here talking about your devotion to Tiff, not showing interest in others, and making it clear basically that you're taken, well, of course nobody is going to even consider whether they'd be interested in you or not because you're simply unavailable. And most people respect that label. So a lot of people don't let themselves start to form interest in someone that's unavailable. I'm going to really act this one. That's true. <laughs> and if you haven't been speaking closely to a lot of people, having a small group hangout or one-to-one hangouts with people and forming those emotional connections, there are also hasn't been any room for anyone to show interest. Like, you just can't think of anyone right now. Because if you had been putting yourself out there or people thought you were single, and if you were making yourself available to grow closer with people, surely there would be some people you could think of right now. But it's never an immediate thing. It's a process. Uh, honestly, my confidence where it is, I doubt it. Especially if it, you also, want. Also, do these you, fucking people not use punctuation? Come on now. No, no. Especially if what you want is an emotional connection with someone before anything else. But hang on. Did the, did you hear the cats fighting? No. Okay. I'm cats looking at my fighting. lines. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. You know. Well, I mean, look, I I get distracted very easily when I'm acting. I'm mm. very in the moment, but very not in the moment. Anyway, uh, honestly, I know that's the wrong one. Uh, But I get what you're saying. But I get what you're saying. The physical need is a constant burden on me, and I can't relax because of constant Oh, blue balls. A constant burden on this fucking sack. If you leave me blue balled, I'm going to die. Ask a doctor. Uh, Naomi sings, just you and your hand tonight. And that's the point. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay? It is... She it, knows exactly yeah. what he's doing. If you're in a relationship and there's, there's no sex or whatever, that's obviously shitty. But you can just jerk off. And if it becomes to the point where it's not happening at all and you come, it needs to end, that's fine, whatever. But you can just jerk off. That's, that is an option. He uh, clearly wants to jerk off with her. Yeah. That's what this whole conversation is really... Yeah. He keeps, just like the predators in the chat logs, um, you know, the decoy will bring up a different topic and they will answer that question and go immediately back to sex Mm. because they're not focused on getting to know this person. They're focused on their sexual pleasure. Yeah. And this is what he's doing here. Anyway, I guess so. Lol. Kalinka, Kalinka. Damn. I don't have the libido moti here or moat here, but I also do want to say this. Of course, this is just my subjective opinion, just like everybody has a subjective opinion. I don't think there's anything wrong with your genetically passed down looks. You've mentioned it multiple times that you want to lose weight. If that's something that's keeping you from feeling confident, then it's important to work on that. You'll probably feel physically a lot better too because of the dopamines from working out. Hell, Arnold Schwarzenegger says pumping iron makes him feel like he's coming day and night in an interview. Because if you build up your self-confidence, it'll probably do you wonders for being able to connect with people in whatever capacity you decide to be. And at the end of the day, if you don't love yourself, yeah, someone else can love you. Loving you can help, but it's it'll never be entirely fulfilling. And if they're ever not there, it leaves you crippled. God, she's really wise for her age. 
Yeah. Whatever it is that you need to do for make yourself happy, more confident, more fulfilled with yourself, you need to figure out those things and take the time to do them. Don't just drown yourself in work because if you're not in a place where you're happy or confident, reaching out to people, it's going to be really hard for anyone to reach out to you. Yes, uh, that's true. Thanks for now, listening. Now, now you sit in that friend zone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you think about what you did. It's like the penalty box. You go and sit. In, yeah, you go and sit in the wank box. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's true. Thanks for listening, Naomi. Again, punctuation, people. It's comma, Naomi, full stop. You're a handsome chap. Looks aren't going to stop you if you make yourself available to people and start trying to make connections. Yeah, especially, like, if you've got 250,000 Twitch people, there'll be people who'll fuck that. There will be. Yeah, like, yes. There's, there's absolutely. literally no reason to be, like, abusing people. Well, no. ever. No. But especially in this... Like, you, you could, If he wanted to, if he was an honest actor, he could go and find women yeah i think we kind of re wrap this bit up yeah. so we can go to june 20th 2020 in Ar arkham arcadum oh okay that's the next one right. the end of that yeah. pick hang on what so you wanted that pick back what no 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 no. i thought there was um more but i know that there are more there's more coming up this is just yeah. basically laying the groundwork right yeah. she's laying out her case of his pattern of behavior yeah so the... uh vr chat yeah go on yeah. I unfortunately don't have any evidence of this, as I didn't think my good friend was going to put me in an uncomfortable position like this, up close and personal, and I wasn't streaming or recording. Take this as you will. I'm not putting too much weight on this, but this is my recollection of my experience in VR chat with Arcadum sometime between these conversations. I was in VR chat, and Arcadum requested on me. We went over some pleasantries, and then he started talking about how pent up and repressed he was feeling. He kept saying that he was lonely, that he's desperate to feel like a man again, and asked me if I was lonely, if I was happy. He kept moving closer as he was saying those things. I kept moving away and trying to shift the conversation in an encouraging and friendly direction. Eventually, he was like, all right, well, I got to go. I just wanted to stop by and see how you were doing, I guess. When we hadn't talked about D&D or any stuff we used to have normal, friendly conversations about, and he left. There was a second I'm sad and horny pity fest after okay this there was a second i'm sad and horny pity fest after the events on june 30th that ended similarly so confession june 30th 2020 yeah sorry i moved him <laughs> yes <laughs> that was not long enough that's what she said anyway um um yeah a, a six hyphenated word is a bit much but i get i get it <laughs> All right, I'll keep reading while you, uh, if you want to mute yourself for this next one before we go to the... Oh, I'm going, oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, I can do this one. Okay. This happens one, and then in brackets, one, day after Arcade asks Kelly Siren out, read her story for info, and gets She rejected. turned him down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she turned him down. Gets yeah. rejected. While still publicly with Tiff, and actively asking, uh, talking to other women as well, read their stories for info. Allegedly, he asked at least two other people out that same week. In case the context isn't enough, as you can see from the DMs, he asks to call me, and then afterwards I thank you for telling me about his feelings for me. In this call, he said, I would like to formally request to court you. I'm just going to yeah. time out on that one, I think. On. Yep. In the call... I would like to request to formally court you. Yes. And so on and so forth. Well, yeah, but it's a formally request to court you. Mm -hmm. What century are you in? Because it's not the 21st if you're formally request. Can I have yeah. the contact details of your father so I may ask him for your hand in marriage? Look, what the fuck are you doing? You fucking weirdo. Mm hmm. I turned him down because I was uh, interested in someone. A bit down the line, I tell him I'm still here for you. I hope he'll be able to speak up next time he has feelings for someone and tell him that I won't. Uh, it won't affect our friendship. This is mostly to show evidence and solidify the timeline. Yep, and now, the, now we need the hyperlink. <laughs> well, we don't really need to read through this one because it basically just explains the things she just said. Um, I think it's there how he reacted to her afterwards. Why not? Um, so, like, um, hey, friend, just let's scan down it really quick. Because he does start turning negative and getting very manipulative of her. Okay. And this isn't going to affect our friendship in any way. So no matter what, Stop you can it. always welcome to reach out Get to me. Help. So, yeah, just, like, physically. Yeah, it's a confirmation of what they talked about. Yeah. And then 
trees. Okay. Yeah. Um, do, 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 recording one. Should, do we want to listen to the recording? Yeah, I think it gives good context. Yeah. Uh, so let's um context before the call though. Should we look at those? The two before that. Hang on. Ooh, 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 wait. Hang on. Lost where my thing is. Context before the call. Yo. Well, actually, uh, well, actually I, I, I can just explain this briefly to save time. Okay. Yeah. Basically, um, they were in this conversation, and the the main crux of it is, uh, Arcadum says, as Naomi quotes here, so you know, Naomi, you're the girl that doesn't get invited back to parties, right? So basically saying you're unpopular, no one likes you, right? Which was a, mm -hmm. he thinks is a joke, or at least he claims is a joke, and uh, it isn't. It hurt her feelings. She revealed this to him, and then this incredibly manipulative conversation takes place. Yeah, there's another... Similar call where he's talking to people who are giving him feedback saying, you think that you compliment the DMs and other people who work for you because you say thanks to everyone for all your good work at the end of a meeting, but we're telling you that's not enough. And yeah. we don't perceive you're praising us. And what he does is explain why since he says thank you once, they are factually wrong, therefore their perceptions are wrong, therefore their opinions are invalid. Yeah, as opposed he... to saying, I didn't, understand, I didn't realize that I wasn't communicating as well my appreciation to you. Which yeah, is all he had to do. He does a lot of memes come out of this. Some of this is actually quite funny. Some of it's incredibly manipulative and shitty. But yeah. it's so revealing that he thinks he can literally, like, analytic his way through anything. Like, he can just use mm -hmm. weird numbers and stuff. Like, it comes and across everything this as, is about him. Yeah, it's all about him. He, all. he thinks he's Rick Sanchez. He, honest to God, thinks he's Rick Sanchez. And he's got the asshole who says rude things that he knows he shouldn't say bit of that character down not so much the analytical and scientific genius bit yeah and can we just before we hit play on this too uh just note how what a fucking stand-up person naomi is right yeah yeah absolutely she, she's literally been a wise patient supportive counselor yeah who has graciously turned down his various attempts to jack off at her yeah, exactly, and is still yeah. there and trying to be his friend and support him yeah and this is how he treats her. Oh, Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morto. Oh, yeah. Guy. So we're going over. Sorry, um, the, we're going over the Arcadum manipulation of, of people he who's supposed to be his yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go one point two five speed because it is forty minutes, but it's yeah. Some of this is wild. Oh, can you show me the tab too? I know, being wanting to see what's on my own show. <laughs> it's so demanding. Me, 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 me. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Today is not a good day for me at all. Yeah, me neither. Right, so let's uh, get this over with. Um,. I didn't mean uh, any insult when I said what I said. It was very mm -hmm. tame compared to what all the rest of us were doing and talking about. For sure. You you joined in, and you had every opportunity to see that coming before you joined in and what, how we were talking. Um, actually, uh, so um, I, I came in literally when you mentioned Neve, uh, like to the stream. Well, and well I... then that that is not my fault, nor is what happened to you this weekend, nor is what happened to me. Of course. Your fault either. But my point is, is this, is that this is basically how this is going to go down, by the way I look at it. Um... Is the sound okay? What do you mean? Is can you not? Hear uh, it's it? a little quiet for me, so I wanted to make sure it was loud enough. It, I've heard this before, but I just wanted to make it was sure it was uh, loud enough in the chat. That's all. A little bit low. Um, it's, it's, it's yeah. You, I, I've muted myself, so you can go ahead and whack up the desktop, and I'll keep myself muted until you call okay. on me. You joined in. Uh, I took a soft shot at you. Very tame. The same thing I would have said to anyone else. And that obviously hurt your feelings. Uh, that's not how I meant it. Nobody else there thought that's how that was meant. I mean, Nobody listening thought that's how it meant at all. I mean, in response and, to that, uh, like one person in the call was like, oh, bro, like in that kind of tone. And a few people in yeah, chat said it was too yeah, far. Okay, well, okay. First of all, people in chat are going to exasperate everything. And if you're using them as your argument, that's it's not a good argument. And okay, Kelly farm, also thought it was too far because I was... That's not good. He's trying to debate, bro. -er. He's literally trying mm -hmm. to debate, bro. -er. Yeah. Yeah, he's not letting, he's not saying, oh my gosh, I didn't understand that I hurt you like that. I didn't mean it. I'm so sorry you took it that way. I'm not going to do that again. And That's he, all it needed. Yeah. Also, he's literally saying, well, I said sorry. 
Well, yeah, but you said sorry, but you didn't apologize clearly. Yeah, and saying I said sorry with stank on it doesn't really come across as authentic, does it? True. Yeah. I was crying, and we, her and I were hanging out after, and she was asking why I was sad, and I told her that that's what you said, and I understood that it was banter, but that it hurt me, and she understood and. Well, yeah. Like, what is she supposed to say? What that that you're wrong? No, she's going to be supportive to you. That's. Come on. Okay, dude, I'm just saying that, that... Anyway, like I was saying before I was interrupted, um, Such a charm, uh, that's his way of joking. Yeah, before I was interrupted, he's literally doing like... Again, he thinks he's Rick Sanchez, he thinks he's Destiny. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he's not even Destiny. Bro! Like, to exasperate it, that's a whole back and forth thing that had been happening the whole time. So here's, here's my problem. Um... <laughs> That's where I go to relax. I was relaxing and having a great time. Um, you came in and I wanted to include you, which is a, which is banter. Uh, so when I said, you know, you don't get invited back to the parties, uh -huh. uh, the perfect response would have been the same amount of parties you do, and that would have been fantastic, and I would have loved it because that is how friendship is showed, uh, especially you know amongst the crowd that I that I was hanging out with at the time. Um, so now we move on to this point. I will mm -hmm. no longer be bantering with you because I have no way of knowing as to whether or not you're going to be able to take it, because I have been very, very careful leading up to this. See, this is, again, cl this is classic manipulative behavior. Exactly. You, take this thing that you want away from you. Exactly. You have spoken up against me, so I'm going to punish you. Mm -hmm. That's it. He's. I'm going to punish you for a thing that I did, that you Does pulled out. He doesn't say, um, there are certain things I won't bant with you about anymore mm. because they're obviously sensitive topics and so I won't go near them mm. so that you're not comfortable, so you're not uncomfortable. It doesn't say that. Also, also I mean, this, uh, the, the basic point, We, I think we've all been in situations where, sorry, there's a small fly who's annoying me. It's very, anyway. Um, uh, we've all been in situations where you've had banter with someone who thought you thought could take it and they couldn't. You don't say to them, I'm not going to banter with you anymore. Fuck you. You, yeah. you just don't because you just okay well like clearly that's not the kind of relationship we have fine whatever you move on with your life you don't tell them that because that's just that's you s straight up saying i'm going to punish you because you reacted in a way i don't like and what he wants is submission yeah he not banted with her by never telling her and just never doing it but he's telling her because he wants her to feel like something's being taken away and she submits to him and behaves correctly in the future this point on what you can and can't take and it seemed like you could i was wrong and the only way to ensure that this won't happen again is to not do it with you anymore there you go that's the solution i mean if that's what you feel that's, is necessary okay that, that is the solution but I mean, we've, we've did... literally been bantering for like a year and a half and i've never yeah, had which issues. is why i felt which is why i felt comfortable that i could do something especially but, but, something that's soft no, but this is what i'm but this is what i'm saying what like, was it's... your intention that you would message me in the middle of the night after i was laying down saying that was uncalled for and too far like i, just, I wanted what, what, i wanted what, to tell you, you i wanted, wanted to tell apology, you right that's what you wanted Yes, He's not but, even but that doesn't mean that, that, so that, what, what else is there to talk about? That doesn't mean that, that you need to completely, like, shut something down. Like, like, it, it... <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't get to decide what it means. I get to decide how I react to it. And the only way to ensure... See, and he's literally doing the thing now. You don't get to decide what offends you. I mm -hmm. didn't mean it in an offensive way, therefore you reacting offended is not valid. Like, he thinks people are robots. He literally thinks people are robots that you can, like punch numbers into and they'll react how you want them to and it's yeah like, it's he's so like look i don't I'm, i don't know his doctor but he must be somewhere on the spectrum he's he, he must be his inability to see other people as people to be able to interact in a normal social way and that's not to excuse the abusiveness at all no amount of being on the spectrum is that but he's just he cannot be He's there's look at there's a there's there's blinkers to reality there that I don't I, think can be explained in a non medical way. They I think that um, he is hyper defensive, hyper sensitive to criticism, and is basically a black hole for validation. And when people step up to him, he dials it up to a hundred. This is exactly what Stern described. True. Right. Something that two people who have banded before and one time one crossed the line could talk through reasonably because they built up that trust yeah. but she criticizes him and he goes to 100 yeah 
Yeah, he could just be. Well, it's not a matter of could. He is a cunt. He's a bad person. Mm-hmm. He's an asshole. But I'm saying I think there's something even beyond that that he needs to a go to therapy for. And I think apparently now he said he is going to go to he therapy, therapy, which is which is fine. But also, I would argue that he needs uh, some other possible medical intervention to stop him going into. Yeah, maybe it's narcissistic personalities or whatever it is. He needs to be medically assessed uh, to be dealt with because he's a dangerous person. He is going to hurt people. In, I mean, so far, I mean, I, there is one story we'll get to later in content warning for that. There's sexual assault, basically. Um, but, I, I mean, the, the potential for that kind of manipulative behaviour to... Um, grow and grow within a person especially if they've got power as he had is uh yeah like that it doesn't end in a good place that you are not harmed again is to not include you it's as simple as that like (laughs) what 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 did you think was going to happen that i'd say you know what you're right and then i'd walk on eggshells around you for the rest of the time like i have to send you pre-messages to make sure that what i say is fine because obviously my prerequisite my my uh preordain uh that's not the right word um my predisposition towards you was incorrect all right if we've had 100 conversations and one of them went awry that doesn't mean we need to stop having conversations that's the, not the what i said thing, no, I, no, I, I, said. I know but i'm bringing up like a, a, a comparative example like if, if you if you eat 100 burgers and one of them is rotten you don't stop eating burgers like like it, it, i'm fine with banter i enjoy Actually, and you appreciate do. You our stop banter. eating burgers from that place <laughs> so you're, you're... he's debate growing up He's literally debate rowing her. What are you doing? He's not actually listening to her perfectly valid oh. analogy oh. and trying to understand her point of view. He's trying to find a flaw in her argument. Yeah. He's literally going, well, actually, you're making you're making my argument for me. Your premises are not based. Oh, shut the fuck up, man. Yeah, he's, li- he's literally doing the well, actually. He literally... Oh. Yeah, yeah. Your your example works against you, but that's not that's not the point. The point is is that <clears throat> this is what happened. This is the course of events. Uh, He's so desperate to, whole, desperate to be in control to of this me, conversation. Kind of I'm not even going to get into that. Rather but, than me having to go up in a, uh, Christy, just move the microphone a bit further away from you, and that should right. line up. Okay. Okay. Yep. Talk. Is that better? That's better. All right. Thank you. That was just patronizing and condescending. The the point is is that you came into a group that was already established and which a social paradigm had already been established and which we were all riffing on each other. Now, because you didn't know that was happening when you walked in, that is not our fault, that is yours. That's number one. Reading a situation is the common thing that people need to do when they walk into any situation. Sit rep is a basic setup to understand anything that's happening. Sit rep. Sit rep. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> This is not D and D, my friend. Stop well, yeah, thinking. I think that's the military. Background. Well, yeah, no, but he's he's doing like um, he does this later on as well. Like it's the number seventeen point eight percent will become relevant later on. Have you seen this, by the way, Critty? Before? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the number seventeen point eight will become relevant later. There are some fucking memes in this. Jesus, he genuinely seems to think that human existence exists on the same level as as um as D&D like he literally calls himself a what was it a, an advanced empath like he rolled <laughs> he rolled big on empathy oh uh, that's people. not actually that's actually not a, ca- a class at least not in D&D but well you know what I mean like yeah, the yeah, idea yeah. that an attribute can be dealt out that way yeah. like yeah. stop stop that's not how anyone works <laughs> oh yes. god um yeah. everything is her fault yeah. nothing is his fault true true number 2 I tried to include you in it because I know that you're a quiet one. So I tried to I tried to throw you in there and I use that opportunity of correction as an opportunity to get you in there because while it might seem lesser to you to correct me like that, up to that point, that was the object of banter because that correction had just happened. So therefore, when you play the first card, Naomi, that tells me you're ready to play the game. And therefore, I countered because that's how banter works. And the counter was very light, incredibly light compared to all the shit that we have been talking. But apparently, due to things that I could not possibly have known about, it was too much for you. So, and, and so in response, Arcadum, I wanted to let you know that it was something, that that specific comment was something that was... By the was way, I've spent this is at 1.25, so we get through it. Mm-hmm. ...hurtful to me. 
because I didn't that want to hold on to it. For, and after a really bad weekend, that shit made me cry. And I said, I yeah. was kidding. That was just banter, Naomi. I'm sorry it hurt your feelings. And you said, some banter can be hurtful, Peppy Hands. And I said, I will not banter with you anymore. I'm fine with banter in general. How much good shit talking we have done over the past years? And you're basically saying, you know, nobody, Naomi, nobody likes you. That's not really banter in my honest opinion. That isn't what I said, which means that at that point, any discourse that we would have over it becomes pointless because you're already believing I said something that I didn't. Well, not getting invited back to parties doesn't mean people don't like you. That's not what I said. I know that is what that means. That's precisely what that means. <laughs> You're saying people don't invite you back to parties because they don't like you. They don't want to spend time with you. They don't consider you a friend. <laughs> Which is pretty fucking hurtful. That doesn't that doesn't strike me as banter. Yep. That strikes me as like some really nasty shit. No, maybe he's he just, he did mean it as a joke. Maybe he thought it was a joke. I, I think any normal-ish person would understand someone reacting badly to that. Really? Mm -hmm. I know that you, like, I'm not saying that I took it as a personal attack of people don't like you. I'm saying that the banter of whoa, 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 not getting whoa, whoa. invited. That's, that's, no, you specifically said it's more personal. So you did take it as a personal attack. The bite rowing. So, yeah. uh, what? <laughs> no, so, so what I'm what I'm saying, Arcadum, is that I didn't perceive it as, like, you telling me that nobody likes me. Because I understand that like, like what you were doing was banter but the phrase like you don't get invited back to parties implies people don't like you enough to invite you back to parties or something negative something negative results in you not being invited yeah, back to parties. Right, right. Past, if you take it past right. banter it can mean that so that fault is on you but like that, that so i'm saying I'm, what, what i'm saying so is it's that, literally like, it's your fault for being offended by the thing i said yeah so your apology means nothing then yeah because you're not sorry you said it yeah and he's gaslighting her yeah oh absolutely that phrase in and of itself did not feel like banter to me because because i don't okay. i don't take that's not my problem is it what a prick i, I mean wait so be stronger my advice <laughs> or don't play Fucking hell, like, what, 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 did, what did you think the response what should have been what like <laughs> what did you expect from what like like, like, from, like from bringing this up to you yeah you got your apology that obviously wasn't enough all dude all i wanted was to let you know so that i wouldn't hold on to it and like it wouldn't keep being like a little sore spot right yeah you kept drawing it out though i said i was kidding it was just banter i'm sorry i hurt your feelings that's it that's right. what you came for and i want yeah exactly that's a good point friends don't talk to friends like this mm -hmm. they just don't mm -hmm. look that's that's your fault that's on you yeah. like who talks like this to a friend like i talk like that to a prick <laughs> to someone i didn't like maybe yeah Wanted to let you know. And then you said some I wanted, I wanted to let you know. Because you wanted to fucking yeah. lecture me. That's what you wanted to do, and that's what you tried to do. See, that's the problem. Telling me that you had a bad weekend and I made you cry over some banter, that was resolved the moment I responded with, I was just kidding, it was just banter, that I was am resolved. sorry it hurt your feelings. That is because that was my intention. I understand. Again, it's, it literally thinks it's like, it's like a D&D &D thing. They've moved on to a different scene now. Well, I think it's more that he is under the mistaken impression that if he apologizes, the other person, A, has to accept his apology and two, move on from it. And that is not an obligation that a person that you apologize to, you can expect from them. He said, I said, I'm sorry. And then it wasn't done. And therefore, like, now he's angry. Mm. And that's very immature. Yeah. To answer the chat, yeah, uh, this is published because uh, Naomi kept a lot of this private for a long time until she realized... It wasn't just her that was being like treated quite poorly, but there were other women who had been like, like know, over a dozen, yeah, sexually assaulted, basically. One of them, yeah, yes. one of them had, yeah, but yeah. a lot of them had been treated really poorly and tried to be basically virtually dry humped. Yeah, yeah. An understanding that it hurt you and an admission to fault, in which I took care of all of that in two sentences. I and then you tried to go into the to your seconds. regular lecturing self, which you've done plenty of times. Some banter can be hurtful, and I just didn't want to deal with it. And then you proceeded to try and explain to me uh, in further detail why I was wrong to say it. And I just didn't, I just didn't want to deal with it. I just didn't have the sympathy for it. You know, normally in, in friendships, people don't say either, like, deal with the status quo or leave. Like, I only said that after you brought it up to this point, because if I don't understand what it is that you actually want... Yeah, but that's the that's the point, dude. She brought it up, so you're punishing her to make sure that she, and by extension other people you're, you know, punishing in similar ways, or treating in similar manipulative ways, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you only reacted this way because she brought it up. So, if she'd just chosen the path of, 
uh, suffering in silence. Ju- yeah, just just uh, knuckling under, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Then it wouldn't have been a problem. If she'd just done everything you wanted, you wouldn't be yeah. punishing her. It's on her. You're literally doing victim blaming and like horrific uh, manipulation here. This is really shoddy. This is where we kind of get like into the manipulative. I mean, I don't know if we're quite to the grooming yet, but this is definitely kind of like mm. breaking people, gaslighting them, making them doubt their own judgments and their assessment of how they deal with you. Yeah. But I still don't. Like, <laughs> you got your apology and I meant it, but you kept drawing it out. Okay. So it's obviously you the, wanted the, more. Typically, typically, you know, you know, if, if somebody does something that doesn't have the intention to hurt, but it hurts somebody, they, they, they don't like say, like, oh, well, that wasn't like, I, I, making they, they fucking... don't say what I didn't mean to do that because if I meant to do it, that would mean I wasn't your friend. No, they don't, they don't say shit like nobody else took it that way. They don't say shit like, like, it's your problem that you took it that way. They say, they, they literally just say, like, I didn't say that until after you tried to explain to me how to talk to people. Can you pause it again? That was me. She's literally trying to explain to him how to be a decent friend and yeah. a good human being. That's all she's doing, and he's offended. Yeah, she isn't telling you how to speak to people. She's mm-hmm. trying to advise you to not end up in this situation again. Like, she, she's being a good friend here, and you don't deserve it. Yeah, she was still trying to reason with him and make him understand and be patient with him, and he didn't deserve it. Me not having any more of your shit. As I pointed out at the very beginning, the first res- what was the first thing I said to you when you said that to me? I'm it sorry, wasn't. it hurt your feelings. I was just kidding. I, it was I, just was, I was just kidding. It was just banter to explain my position. And then I said, I am sorry it hurt your feelings. That's me taking that's me taking all the fault for it. I didn't say you were wrong. I didn't say any of that other shit until after you, and then what is your response after that? You said some banter can be hurtful, Pepe hands. Well guess what? That's you trying to say, well, some banter can be hurtful because I know that but if the I... fact they keep saying Pepe hands, look, she's doing that to try and ameliorate the situation. Yeah. She doesn't want to make it into like a fight. She's mm-hmm. just trying to tell you something. It's like putting lull at the end of a thing that isn't actually funny. It's like a way of like, oh, I don't want this to be like... Taken too seriously. Yeah, I don't want oh. this to be seen as like an attack or being horrible. Because I'm not, you know. If I had engaged that correctly, you would have, or in the way that you probably wanted to, you would have went to this tirade explaining to me how... And you even tried to do it later after that. And so I just don't have time or sympathy left in my tank to deal with that. So the best way to make sure that you don't get hurt again is to make sure that you don't play the game. I just won't play it with you. There you go, everyone wins. It's not like our relationship's gonna change. That is a presumption on your end. The, 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 the change will be seamless, you won't notice it, even with me pointing it out to you, you won't see it. Because I know how to do it. So many fact, attempts we had never even talked about it. This assert is superiority. Step, you wouldn't even have noticed anyway. That's just in this one instance, my normal sympathy tank that I have was out. And what I meant by be stronger, well, Understand that that's maybe what I actually meant by it wasn't the thing that you thought that was meant by it. Just gaslighting. Straight yeah. up gaslighting. Yeah. Yeah. Your memory of the thing, your understanding of the situation, was fundamentally wrong. Yep. Like, uh... The reason why I said that's not banter anymore is because I enjoy banter. All right, it wasn't it wasn't to start getting into a thing about how like 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 to start getting into a lecture. The reason why I said that's not really banter in my opinion is because that specific comment hurts me. Most of the time, I love banter. All right, and I didn't feel like it was necessary to to be like okay, we're not gonna banter anymore. Like that that part's gone. You know what I mean? Because oh, I don't I, because, because because you felt the need to message me and I made you cry and all that. I don't want to fucking deal with that guilt. And the only way to make sure that I don't, that Mm -hmm. you're not hurt, more importantly. You're in the wrong for making me feel bad. Yeah. Even though it's based on entirely what you did. I don't want to deal with the negative consequences of my own actions, so you're the problem here. Yeah. Is what he's telling her. But also that I don't take yet another mark to my guilt, then it's to just not play the game. Because for the advanced level of empath that I am, take... Advanced level of empath. Jesus. Negative. No, dude, you like rolled a one on your charisma check. Have you, is your mic fucked up again? Because I'm getting some background, like, like you're in a wind tunnel or some shit. I had the window open a little bit. Is that better? No, it's still, yeah, there's a lot of background noise. I don't quite get that. That wasn't happening before. I don't know. I'll check my mic, but I'll mute myself now. Okay the year that we have spent together and uh you know felt each other out talked to each other feeling it out that i that i tried to invite you to play the game with me and then i hurt you means either a 
uh, I'm not nearly as perceptive as I was hoping I was, and therefore I can't be trusted to play, or you can't take it. Both of these things are, are it's one of those two things. Or the third one is, this was just a shot on you on a bad day, but you're not taking it as a shot on the bad day, so you've taken that off the table. So therefore, the only way to ensure actual resolution, because I'm not going to all right, let's Go let's take forth. it as a shot on a bad There's day on and because because of the kind of person that i am i want to bring up shots even if they're on bad days because i don't want friendships to be fucked up with people that i care about all right no this isn't none of this is going to happen like that your presumption what are you gonna think we're not gonna be friends anymore because of this no i just won't i just i just won't play with you like that that's all it's like um don't invite don't invite them to dodgeball you know it's like it's, that's all it is why is it dodgeball who thinks of their friendship as dodgeball? I don't know. That's... By the way, it might just be because my mic is really turned up, so you're getting more background noise, by the way. I just had that thought. But yeah, this his analogies suck. Yeah. He, he rolled a one on analogy. <laughs> that, is the, that is the thing. All right. I mean, unless you've got a better idea, I'm keen to hear it. That ensures that you're not hurt again. Is there any other uh, methodology that you can suggest to me that guarantees that you won't be hurt again? I think at this point she's just given up. Yeah. Hence why I'm taking it. That's the only one I can think of that guarantees it. I don't know. As aside from aside from just awareness look, of... She's of... literally on the verge of tears here and he's just like, yeah. whatever. Fuck you. Like, this would break my heart if a friend was like this with me. This would be awful. Well, this would be gut -wrenching. You're not a complete piece of shit. Wow, thank you. Um, I'll, I will. Uh, you can write that on a fucking the supposed to quote. Not a complete piece of shit. That's, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll take that. Um, yeah, but he's just like, no, whatever. If you can't take it, fuck you. Like, it's just grim. Like, the kinds mm -hmm. of comments that typically attack, like, things uh -huh. like, like, like the difference between something that would actually be hurtful. No, so no, no, you're, you're asking prick. me for suggestions, right? Yeah. What's a prick? Yeah, you're literally just asking me for a suggestion. So what I'm responding oh. with is, is my, my idea of tossing it out. So contemptuous. I'm not, I'm not trying to lecture you. This is, this is my idea. Like, just, just being aware that there's a difference between being like... Like, like some... some bad, and I, don't, I don't know. We, How would you even talk to someone who's so fundamentally bad faith? Here, yeah, come, here comes I, the lecture. Fuck I would've... You. But then again, you built up, you feel bad for him, you care for him, he's there yeah. for you, and so he treats you like sh it's it's an abusive cycle. Yeah. yeah. And then he'll be really nice to her and a shout a love bomber and pay attention to her. Mm. We've done so much banter over the past year and a half. There's a f obviously a, a difference between between that kind of stuff and something like this that is like... Because you know people, you, you know the kinds of things that, that will hurt people. Like you've said yourself that you know how to dig into people. So understanding that, that like using the things that actually dig into people when you're bantering is is not as fun as as the more like, lighthearted banter. I don't that... even know this person and I feel bad. Yeah. Because she's like you can hear her like welling up. Like you can hear the fucking emotion in her voice. And everything she's saying is really sincere and not coming from an accusatory place at yeah. all. And she's it... being incredibly gentle with him. You'd call this a lecture. Mm -hmm. I, I genuinely, for the sake of terms of service, cannot describe my feelings towards this man right now. I just, I'll leave it there. That fucking, most people love participating in. That, that was light. That was, that was, <laughs> maybe it's not to you, but that was light in the intention. And furthermore, I know all that, which is why when you said that it was too much, I said I was sorry. The conversation could have stopped there, and then it would have been fine. But when you proceeded to try and drag it out, I saw you weren't ready to play the game. Simple as that. Because you wanted more than an apology. No, dude, all I wanted was an apology. I think, I think that... She wanted to be I understood. To you. Can you One... pause it? Yeah. She really wanted to be understood. Yeah, she wanted At to be understood. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what she really wanted, was to know that he'd said something, it hurt her, and she, you know, like, accepted his apology, but wanted to kind of be clear. It wasn't all banter, it was just this one thing you said. And just to understand that, that was all. It's not a difficult ask. Yeah, well, he's, literally, she said, like, oh, some banter isn't, it can be hurtful. And he called that a tirade. Yeah. I can't think of more kid gloves way of approaching this. And yet he's still being a fucking prick about it. Mm -hmm. And then I apologized to you again. And then you kept trying to push. And let me, let me explain something to you that I don't think you're getting. God, his tone. Um, okay. 
full disclosure, full cards on the table. Yeah. Um, are you in an emotional state to handle this? Because I'm not going to hit you when you're down. I don't know. It depends on what it is. Um... In that case, I won't tell you. Yeah, the, the only reason I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hide this emotionally crushing opinion I have about you, and not yeah. tell you, and just hold it over your head. What the fuck, this is like torture. What the fuck is wrong yeah, with you? Yeah, it's emotional abuse. Yeah. And I drew this out is because I was confused about you saying I will not banter with you anymore because I didn't feel like this warranted, like needing to stop banter, and that's that's why I started talking about all that other stuff because I was like, wait, but this this can continue. This can be a one-off thing that is like. So you yeah, say, sorry, I... if anyone wants to dip out at any point, yeah, that I totally get that, and we'll post in Discord when we're finished. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I because I, I watched it and I'd heard it before. I didn't think to do a content warning, but we sh should have done a com content warning for emotional abuse before this. Well, to be fair, we did talk about that. That's what this was. So I think like, we didn't strictly say content warning, but I think anyone who saw that would. Yeah, I think maybe you know you can say warning, but then sitting through it, you get so uncomfortable. It's yeah, yeah. So if people want to dip, mm. that's fine. Come back later. It, it's fine, and I yeah. just wanted to explain why it was outside of the realm of normal banter. Like, okay, yeah, this we'll comment I didn't perceive as normal time. banter. That's why it was outside of the realm of the usual stuff that I'm always fine with. Like that was that was my intention. It was my intention to be like. Well, that explains why Kelly left. Well, her and I were going to hang out anyway, and I messaged her if she still wanted to hang out. I didn't That's message her talking about awesome. your shit. Yeah, I'm going to have to deal with that later. Remember, Kelly had just turned him down? Yeah. And now he's literally like, putting that on her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I acted in a shitty way towards both of you, and you told her that I'd acted in a shitty way to you as well. So now well, I'm going to have to deal with that because of you. Like, what the fuck? Kelly's another uh, woman who he... Asked tried to hit him and she completely rejected him or hit him um yeah and he's uh, look he, basically as the original post we read from that uh, uh char or what it was guy um uh, not only was he manipulative to all these people but he was constantly trying to avoid people talking amongst themselves about how they'd individually been manipulated mm -hmm. and that i think is revealed in what we just heard there sure like Hey, uh, Arcadium said something and I was sad. What? Or are you talking about something else entirely unrelated right now? Her and I were going to hang out anyway, and I messaged her. Did you or did you not talk to her about what I said? Yeah, but that was after. Oh, now it's now. Well, now I'm going to pay for that. What? No, dude, that, that was that was way after if her and I had already if, started talking. If, That's not why she if, left. OK, well, here, here's the thing. You don't know her as well as I do. And if you think for a fact that what you've just done doesn't yes, have rippling consequences, then you're wrong or naive. So. Sorry. Like, now now I have additional stress. Now I know I have to deal with that. And please don't message her trying to nip it in the bud because that will just make it worse. Uh, yeah, don't, don't talk to her. Don't tell Basically. her anything. Mm -hmm. This is fucking mental. I hang out all the time. Her and I had a planned hangout. She didn't leave to come talk to me about this. We had plans anyway. I messaged her like, hey, wanna, are we still hanging out? Are we still on for tonight? And, and she was like, I have a headache, but yeah, I'll be there in a minute. That's why she left the, the, the group call. Because her and I had plans anyway. And the... She said she'd come back. That's the part that you're not understanding. When her and I and ended she... our call, she was planning on going to bed. Yeah, and now she's streaming. By the time by streaming? the time we ended the call, okay. you guys were already done streaming. That's why she didn't come back because it was over. Her and I Negative. talked for a we while. We were still in there. We Negative. were still in there after I streamed for uh, like an hour and a half. But anyway, I'm I don't I'm not gonna try and argue out the semantics of it because the point is I know I have to deal with that now. She's probably gonna fucking take smaller shots at me and I'm gonna have to deal with that and I'm just I'm just it's all about him do you, do you expect friends not to comfort each other like that's oh my god yeah yeah that's what I meant please that is not what I fucking meant <sighs> do you have any idea what it's like to not even be able to talk your true feelings to somebody because you know it'll fucking destroy them like do you do you have do you have any idea what that's like Fuck. yeah like <laughs> That's how that's my constant existence is I can't tell people what I really think or the truth about something, not the full one, because I know that they can't fucking take it. Why do you have so many harmful thoughts towards your friends then? It's like... not harmful <laughs> thoughts. They're hard truths. He, he does. He thinks he's Rick Sanchez. He thinks he's like, <laughs> I'm this asshole truth teller. No, you're just an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. No, no you're just a prick. Yeah. 
And the thing about it is, is because I'm constantly in a position to of providence to people, those friends of mine are made and sustained through a system of service. So that's the difference. I mean, do, do you think that if you didn't do D&D that people wouldn't be friends with you? Like, that's not the yes. case. No, no, no. I know that's, that's, you, you, in fact, I can give you a percentage. Um, it is actually, uh, I believe it is 17.8% of the people that I run D&D for will continue to be my friends once the game is done. Can you pause that? 17.8%. He, mm -hmm. he, he's done some fake mathematics. Some obviously fake mathematics. Yeah, no, th you posted that earlier, Michael. Yeah, you'll have to look on this on the screen, Christy. It's, okay. It's already on uh, Urban Dictionary. Oh, my God. So what's the entry? I'm trying so, to be quiet because I know your yeah. audio is really loud. 17.8%. The alleged percentage of players that join former Twitch stream arcade and Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> games to remain his friends uh, after the game. Used as a substitute for his name or as a copy pasta. So you know, you see the full <laughs> quote there and then the evidence is empirical and then you attributed to Mr. 17.8%. Oh my god, his name is now Mr. 17.8%. Oh my god. Because he's a meme. Wow. He's a meme. He is, he's, he's a meme. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that, like I say, he genuinely thinks it's it, the world is like D&D uh, or something. Like, you can't work out 17.8%. What the fucking mentalness is what, that? Well, but of course, when he runs games, he probably keeps, like, a spreadsheet of the different games and the different players he has in it. It's just like, that is good, you know, management for running multiple games, probably. But what he did was probably total all those up and then count up all his friends that he still talks to from those games. And can I be honest? He, I know he's run more than 100 players. Yeah. Right. Way more than 100 players. That means he would have 17 friends. I don't have 17 friends. <laughs> like, I mean, I have a lot of people I know. Although we've got revised, I don't have 17 friends. We've got revised numbers on that. He currently has 0.0% .0 of his people are friends now. Okay, cool. Good. I have to go to the other side of the room to laugh. <laughs> well, I am that funny. That is true. Yeah. <sighs> I have that number for you. I have made that calculation. I have made that calculation four separate occasions. The evidence is empirical. So, the sorry. Evidence is but empirical. That statement that, do you think they'll, they, they'll, they'll stop being your friends? Is actually yes, as much as you might not like it to be. We don't live in a world of what we'd like to be. We live in a world of realities, and that's the reality of it is that 17.8% of you will not talk to me again. Wait, so no, 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 we'll, 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 excuse me, will continue to be my friend. Uh, I believe it is 48% of you won't talk to me ever again. <laughs> Oh my god, it's a pie chart. Uh, passing messages, not a real friendship. Mm. Now those numbers are probably going to be more bloated onto the passive, the passive passivity due to my position as a streamer. I haven't done, I haven't done the recalculations based off of that yet. But I can tell you Recal unequivocally He's that kind of the the use of D and D in order to make friends has a seventeen point eight percent retention rate. Who has a spreadsheet for their life? Who does that? Who who thinks of things in this transactional way? This is fucking mad. You know, I've been playing D and D with I don't know, maybe probably now tw up to twelve people for at least a year, and you know how many I'm still friends with? Uh, all of them. <laughs> One hundred percent. Yeah, maybe this is zero percent. Maybe this is a Mister Seventeen Point Eight Percent because he drives everybody away. Problem. Oh, and he's making numbers up. There's no way. What fucking calculation can you possibly do? Uh, honestly, I think I could f I could figure out a methodology. Well, yeah, uh, but honestly, no. But again, people don't run on numbers. You well, can't no, possibly be no. accurate with this. This it's is ridiculous. this is him indulging in his pity party. Yeah. This is yeah. him basically displacing actual work by doing meaningless calculations to reinforce a truth that isn't actually true but feeds his narrative. Because in the story of his life, he is the victim. Which is pathetic because he's got two hundred thousand. Oh, it doesn't bad. matter. Two hundred thousand. Yeah, but it would a million. That. Wouldn't. Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy it. This your is life. why. This is why he needs therapy and yeah. he needs to like understand his manipulative behavior and where what drives it and the harm it does. Yeah. Uh, was it? Uh, sorry, you're going to have to roll for keeping Christy as your friend now. True. <laughs> and yeah, apparently he was an amazing DM. I mean, after the he put out some announcement on. Twitter that he was going to stream and the replies were just filled with people whose hearts were breaking because they felt so betrayed and angry at him because they didn't just know him they knew 
um, a lot of the women that are coming out as well and liked them. And so they are just like the fan base is furious. Uh, yeah, he must have been pretty Rightly so. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean, there's obviously always a, an element of luck to online success, but like you have to be good in order to get that many followers. Yeah. So in YouTube terms, that would be worth millions of subscribers, really. Just because the platforms are much different in scale. You know? Yeah, he was going places. Yeah. He was definitely going places until he was tripped over his own dick. Mm. His low-hanging blue balls. That's the tragedy that I live. Oh, so, what a sense. I don't expect you to understand that. What I, a sense. I don't bring it up because it just makes people feel awful. But that's the reality of it. I mean, is that like for all DMs or for you specifically? That's for me spe I can't speak for all DMs. Right. That's for me specifically. But considering that <sighs> that's the only measurement that matters is because it's me. I'm not <clears throat> someone else. So, yeah, that's me specifically. Mm -hmm. Okay, but like, have you thought about why they wouldn't, like, aside, aside from the obvious clout chasers? Because, I mean, because... Oh, no, 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 no. This was before clout. Okay. This is before any of that. These measurements are based off my entire career. So... <laughs> 17.8 percent okay you can say well, it, you but anyway, it true. Because like... oh absolutely oh, no, of mm -hmm. course i have naomi please yes He's such i have, I have augmented behaviors sure. i have done experiments to determine why i have tried to pick different ethnicities i've tried to do different uh what? gender counts what i've the fuck done you? everything what are you doing what are you yeah. doing I, this is, like I said, this is displacement activities from real work on a pity party. This is madness. I've done experiments about different races and gender. What are you, what are you fucking talking about? Have a word for yourself. He's basically looking at retention rates. If you wanted to put it in statistical yeah, terms. Yeah, but I, it's, yeah. I've done experiments. He think he thinks he's Rick from Rick and Morty. He does. Thing with that was within my power to experiment to experiment and that number has remained depressingly the same so that's the way it is it could just be prickle rick sorry <laughs> because it's me but change isn't very I had easy to get that out of my head. especially if someone of my age so bearing a complete and utter personal overhaul that's the way it's going to be so that's why to protect myself from disappointment i have to keep this wall up and one of those walls is determining whether or not I can be I can speak frankly around someone in a non-professional manner. And after a year of our interaction, I thought that I was ready to be comfortable around you. I was wrong. This I mean, is so manipulative. Had a lot more personal conversations than than the closeness. And right. Comfort which is why. Of... Can you pause it? Why I'm not thinking that. Our... This is the whole. I am so disappointed in you. Yeah. I am so. I, I really thought I could trust you, and I am so disappointed in you. Because, again, this is just about getting her to do and behave the way that he wants and never in a way that makes him question himself or the way he behaves. Yeah. All right, friendship is over because of this. I just won't banner with you anymore. That's it. Like, you're, you're the one who is blowing this way out of proportion than what it actually is. Probably they because you've had a mo an emotional day. Like I have, I've had one, too, mm -hmm. but... I'm used to having those because I'm in a, well, I'm not saying that I'm used to having those like other people don't have those every day. Right. I'm saying those that I am yeah. in a specific situation in which my training prevents me from being, I don't have the luxury of being emotional. Oh God, he is. He's, he's again, I can only repeat because mm -hmm. he thinks he's Rick. This tortured, lonely genius who must keep his feelings to himself. He can't allow himself to become emotional. No, you're just a twat. Mm -hmm. You're just a twat, mate. I don't get to message people in the middle of the night with, you know, something yeah, they said to Yeah, it's Sigma male. It's absolutely it. Sigma male nonsense. True. Yeah. Remind me what that means again. It's these fucking sad weirdos online who, look, they reject the alpha, alpha beta dichotomy, not because it's scientific in, inaccurate nonsense that doesn't mean anything when applied to humans in any way whatsoever, and actually most animal groups as well. Um, it's because... I just wanted to say, I, everything that's fake science, you should call scientifical from now on. Scientific, well, I've made that word up, but yeah, we'll go with it. Scientifical. Um, scientifical nonsense, as indeed is Sigma Miles, they're outside of that. They're like the lone wolf. They're, they're completely like emotionless. Uh, they, they detach themselves from these you know, n notions of societal roles like alpha and beta, they stand on their own. 
Oh, right, it's they're the, the rebels. It's the most pretentious shit you've ever heard in your life. It's and a, it's this Sigma, decade. Sigma males are the new punk rock. Oh, don't even start. Don't okay. even fucking start. As far as that goes, uh, if, if you've got alerts on, uh, it wasn't my intention to get you out of bed or anything. My, no, 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 it didn't wake sleep me up. Schedules are I was already all there. out of whack. That's, that's a... I said in the middle of the night because it's accurate, not because it's oh. an in intention that you woke me up. Yeah, By the I, way, I have no fucking pause. semblance of sleep right now. At this point, so by diverting into this soliloquy about how terrible his life is and how he doesn't have enough friends, um, and when he starts to go back to the topic now, she's not fighting back anymore. Yeah. He basically has felt like he's dominated this conversation. He's crushed her spirit and her opposition. Um, he's been able to vent about himself, and now he's basically opening the door to kind of renormalizing um, their situation on his terms. Very true. Also, nice use of the word soliloquy. Oh, thank you. I was actually binging like cliff notes of yeah. Shakespearean plays the other day. My use of scientifical <laughs> juxtaposed with Christie's <laughs> eloquent use of the word soliloquy, I think gives you a fair indication of where we're at. You know? Everything got fucked but, up. But my point is, is that that's the reality I live with. Right. You're 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 taking this way out of proportion. To think that because I'm not going to banner with you anymore, that uh, I'm going to stop being your friend. You won't even notice the difference. I mean, you might. I don't want to speak in absolutes, but my <laughs> my prediction rate on that's pretty high. You won't notice the difference. Seventeen point eight percent again. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So it won't matter. It's just another adjustment that I have to do in my constant state of service that I live in. Oh, the martyr. We wouldn't, be, we, we wouldn't even be having this conversation if my sympathy had been higher because it would have taken more levels of polling for you to get to that statement that I knew was going to be uh, uh, polarizing. Right. You, know, you only got two layers of sympathy this time, not the normal six that I give to you. What the fuck does that mean? Six layers of sympathy. People don't operate by numbers. They're not fucking machines. Mm -hmm. This is... Re oh, it's so weird. Everything's so weird and transactional. It's just... Oh, it's creepy. He's a creepy, creepy man. I'm sorry if that sounds aloof or cold, but that's literally all this is to me, is just numbers. Each person has a different level of sympathy that I give them. And I allot that as much as my mind can take. Man, maybe... maybe Imagine organizing your friends people. like that. Oh, no. All 17 of them. People are numbers yeah. to you. Like, I, I, and I know that people I, whoa, are way... Whoa. Hang on. Is one of the people only 0.8% of a friend? Well, I'm rounding down. It's twenty. Uh, no, twenty percent of them he doesn't like. Yeah, the other, maybe the eighty percent of that person he's fond of, but maybe they're frenemies. Their right leg can fuck off. Oh, well, I never see you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! But like all of this, all of this like testing stuff and like like trying to like dive so deep into people. It's what I do. That's why I'm good at my job. That's, yeah. that's why that's why I can make connections. That's why I can make friends with almost anyone. Dude, it's like a blessing I mean, and a curse. Well, yeah, but I mean, look, I was a soldier. I know how to pay a. I know how to pay the dirt price. Yeah, I know. I was a soldier. I know how to pay the dirt price. I know. Oh, for fuck's sake! This guy is like the John McClane of his own internal movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He's the. Oh god. Yippee ki -yay. Everyone else are just bit parts, supporting roles, or NPCs. Yeah. Know how to eat shit and keep going. I'm tough. Well, if I wasn't tough, I would have died long ago. So. Yeah. Well, this is this is how it's resolved. I I think I think there might be a few more people that would want to stick around, even if you didn't do D and D. But um, thanks for the conversation. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No, aside from the fact that, like, you're—I still think you're a really cool guy, and I and I. And Why, I think that... Naomi? You're too nice. Yep, she Stop. is. Stop. I mean, she's she's drawn the line now, but at that point, too, you know, she was also yeah. still, I think, wanting to be involved in this community, and it's a back door to a big star, and um, you know, so he had all the power. Yeah. And it, there's some talk that I mean, I don't know about this person individually, but there was some of those women were financially. Um, not, well, supported. Supported. I wouldn't. I don't Helped. say dependent, but look, he clearly had leverage over them financially, which is just another layer of ickiness to the whole fucking thing. 
Like, you beat yourself up too much. Well, I mean, I don't really view this as beating myself up. I mean, it's... I you definitely beat yourself up about other things. <laughs> well, yes, because I know myself. Yeah. But let me... I mean, people think that, oh, you're way too hard on yourself. I'm hard on myself in the way that I'm hard on myself because once, many years ago, I allowed myself to become arrogant and I became the most evil version of myself that I have ever witnessed. Unlike now, when you're super mm -hmm. chill. The fuck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he thinks this is an improvement. I don't. Well, maybe he was a mass murderer before. I don't know. It, was... mm -hmm. it disgusted me. Because imagine, you know me enough now that you know what my abilities are. Uh -huh. Imagine if they had no temperance. Right. What are you? T what, I, t he thinks he's Jackie Chan or some shit. Maybe yeah. Look, I, I could kill you yeah. with a single touch of my hand. Exactly. I can do a Vulcan death grip on you, but I'm <laughs> merciful. Like, what are you talking with no temperance? Eat my dick. And this is the was... internal monologue that he has in his brain. Yeah. And he, he does, he talks like a D&D &D person as well. My powers are immense. Imagine them with no I... temperance. Well, you I mean he talks like he's playing D&D. &D. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. D&D's okay. are just uh, sad nerdy. Because D&D &D peoples, uh, yeah. <laughs> sad nerdy virgins, yeah, we know that. Uh, I'm, I'm joking, Christy. No, but he talks like he's an actual character from D and D, which he, yeah. he isn't. He's just a really nasty human. Well, he has a soldier framing, and then he has a sort of like power—I don't know—overlord almost. Maybe is mm. kind of how I would phrase it. This sort of okay. you know monarch of his own kingdom. Yeah. Paul in the chat. Okay, uh, should Kev not suggest being a prick is evidence of autism? I will counteract that by saying I wasn't using the fact that he was a prick. I clearly delineated. I'm saying he is a prick, regardless. I was just ruminating on the idea that he has a disconnect in terms of his socialisation that goes beyond him just being a prick to the point where I think he has a genuine medical problem as well. Now, I can't say that because I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I was just positing a possibility because he, he strikes me as a person who's dealt with people with um, uh, spectrum issues, let's say. Um, he he has a lot of the hallmarks of that. It's not it's not in any way uh, to ameliorate the evil that he's done, because it's not an excuse. Most autistic people don't go around acting like a complete prick. As well, they 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 actually actively go out of their way, to a fault sometimes to be overly nice because they don't want to be. Bad, if that makes sense. Whereas this guy is just going for it, you know. I am cancel. Yeah, cancel me. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, that's fine. Selfish. Okay. I'll get. I'll get a fucking book deal in no time. Be fine. Imagine the destruction that I could wreak, and get away with it. He's thirty. The matter. The, the the problem is, is that in the military, I was not a good person. Right. I wasn't, and it was only because of my self realization. That thankfully my love for D and D outpaced my selfishness, and I was able to retemper myself. Mm -hmm. These are the things that I put in place specifically to control who I am. Mm -hmm. To control the so, raging beast. When I'm talking about what it's like to not be able to say the things that I really want to say, that part of that, which everybody shows restraint. Every well, I mean, everybody who wants to. Yeah, if people didn't, people would be cancelled left and right. <laughs> like yeah. Love but the me. thing is, is that I know that my influence is palpable, and is naturally more destructive than most other people. Now, well, granted. Come on. Come on. I'm naturally more destructive. My powers are immense. Yeah. There's a lot of grandiosity, grandiosity in this. Scientifical grandiosity. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's narcissism. Yeah, absolutely. It, recently, I've been exposed to other people who also have that power at differing degrees and specializations. But from what I've noticed, with the exception of probably two, mine is stronger than theirs. And I keep it in check. <laughs> so crazy. His power stone, levels are over 9,000. Really <laughs> it's so cringe. No, no, like, it's like level 17. Right. Yeah. So. Now there's the risk of insane backlash. No, it's not even that. I don't, I don't care what happens to me. I care about what I just did to that person. And because their pain is then magnified. Because right. of the audience. Right. Pause. Like, just so. think about his lack of reflection on the pain he's caused her while he's bragging about his ability to understand other people's pain. Just think on that for a second. Mm. <sighs> okay. Anyway, the, 
I normally don't talk about this kind of stuff because it makes people treat me differently. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't talk about it. They either don't believe me at all, and they, they think I'm a liar, I'm delusional, or even worse, they believe me and then they watch everything that they say around me. That's why I don't tell people it. That's also why I don't play Among Us. <laughs> he literally pulled out the Among Us card! Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The fucking memes. Yeah. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't play Among Us. But brilliantly, she goes on to refute that in a second. Yeah, does she laughs, right? Yeah. You ever you ever want to know what it's like to play Among Us with me? Ask Momo. I mean that's why I don't play Among Us. The, the first the first tier group uh where where we all play together, you joined us. It was pretty oh, funny. Okay. So it's not only does he play Among Us, she's played Among Us with him and she <laughs> survived. And he didn't remember. Almost like he's full of shit. Yeah. Like, well, it doesn't jive with his narrative. You know. Just, it's madness, man. It, oh, he's, oh, God. Fucking hell. Anyway. Anyway. The, I am sorry that I hurt your feelings. Thank you for saying that. Of the percentage that I believe it is my fault, I, th I certainly believe that I hold enough of a, of a percentage of it being my fault that it deems Why are you doing percentages again, dude? That's not, again, that's not how these things operate. I know. I know. Apology. I'm sorry for blowing it up a little more than I should and not being, uh, not, not thinking about my words more before saying them because I wasn't trying to turn it into a lecture, but the way I perceived some of your responses was, uh, well, it, well, it wasn't clear to me, so I, I wasn't sure if you were, like, apolog like, really apologizing or dodging the question, but, but it's all, it's all good now. Pause. Or n not dodging the question. He just got her to apologize for being completely reasonable. Yeah. That's manipulation. Like I say, we can be, we can look at this with a certain amount of hindsight that she's now realised. Yeah. I think the error of her ways in trusting this piece of trash. Uh, but she strikes me as a genuinely nice person. And can I also say, based on her descriptions of how people should interact and how people value each other, she's been in like good for her, like a lot of healthy relationships. Mm. She knows what it should look like yeah. and how people who care about each other should act, and. Yeah, I don't know if she has a lot of experience with this, so it might have been really overwhelming and disorienting for her. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's fucking late. Well, but it's like, text. Yeah, yeah. Text, text loses all humanity. Yeah, for sure. And therefore, you're going to view everything as the, the, as the most possible. negative that yeah. it can be, because yeah, if, once you divide if, humanity, yeah. then you have only the devil. So it, felt like, it, it felt like one of those... Once you divide humanity, you only have the devil. Like you're, what? You're not DMing a what? session. From, <laughs> just, no. You're talking to a person. What? The fuck you? Oh, it, it's just tiring. That, that was like, that was like, like, well, I'm sorry that you took it that way. You know, you know what well, I mean? Yeah, which <laughs> but, yeah. of course, I specifically <laughs> didn't place the your in there. Right. I placed the your in the place that I did with the hopes that you wouldn't read it that way. Yeah, yeah. Because I could have, I could have said, I'm sorry you feel that way, and it would have meant the same thing. But yeah, of course, you would have sure. taken that into the whole PC outlook, chomping at the bit. Yeah. Oh, apparently, she has been in an abusive relationship. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that, and I'm glad that she has such a firm grasp on what healthy ones should look like. Mm. Foaming at the mouth, fucking, he, he, my feelings are about, you know, kind of shit, so. And we avoid that by using proper placement of words. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you act that way, I've just had to recently deal with that to an extreme degree, and it's fresh oh, in my geez. head. Dude, it's fucking weird when If you're interested, <laughs> I had an entire document written about my shortcomings and sent to me today. Wait, that was, I, I thought that was like a couple days, or like yesterday. No, that happened today. Dude, days are fucking flowing together. Just... Yeah, his like, muds were so disturbed by his shit that they put together a document, which I'm not going to read because it's mucho texto, like crazy shit. Um, I haven't seen that one. Outlining like his uh, many failings. Now, some of them are quite, it would appear quite trivial because it's like, you played this game in this way and that's bad or something. Like, just like, uh, they go on about gamer stuff. Yeah, gamer, gamer. Fucking weird D&D &D nerd shit. But some of it's like, also, you're a, you're a bad person. <laughs> like, don't don't treat mm. people like that. Yeah. So yeah, no, I was I was there for uh, for for bits of that stream. What a shit show. There it is. If you ever want to peruse it, that's what I had to deal with today. Oh, pity me, pity me, pity me. Was uh -huh. short. I took it out on you because these someone people, else pissed me off. These people... That's why I didn't have the usual six layers of sympathy. I only had two layers of sympathy. Those four layers now lie in the underworld. Said, uh, the day that I streamed Lost Odyssey because I was depressed and I needed the break that everybody kept saying that I should take uh -huh. uh, was a dereliction of my duty. 
yeah, coming from people nice. that did not serve in the military and therefore do not have a fucking idea of what duty is. Uh -huh. The fuck are you talking? They're talking about a game, oh dude. You're not talking about taking on the fucking Taliban. You talk. It they're talking about a fucking a tabletop. Well, it's internet, but you know, a tabletop game. It's more pity me, pity me. I'm such a victim. I am I'm a so soldier. Wrong. These people so understand nothing of the marshal. Like, just stop. Stop. Now, I know they probably didn't mean it that way, but when you use a word like derelict, when you use a phrase like dereliction of duty, which is a military term, yeah, then I'm going to rip your fucking head off. Right. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? So, and I mean, it just gets kind of worse from there. Yeah, yeah. The point is, rip is that your that's, head where, off. that's where my sympathy went today. What was a weird laughing people shitbag. that sent that to me. Well, do, do you know who sent it? Because it was anonymous, oh, right? Oh, it's anonymous, but I can find them. Right. It's not. It's not difficult. If I if I wanted to know who they were, I would have deigned. I would have. I would have falsified my intention to speak with them in good faith. I would have found out who they were and then removed them from the community. Right. That would have been the best solution. I didn't do it because it's dishonest. Mm -hmm. I'm such a myself. good you have person. A problem with what I'm doing to the point that you don't believe I care about this, then you need to leave. How That's much do people like them. pay to participate in the living world? Like I know they, they don't. submit applications. It's, 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 it's like it's subscription, a, it's right? Yeah, it's if you're sub, you get to be a part of the living right. world, but it's a reward for the subs. Yeah. Not it's it was never designed to be like a, a paid system service, that you yeah. pay, that you paid for. Yeah, that's not what it is. And uh there's this whole thing where they try to like break down what the what the money cost of the item they paid for was. Oh man, it gets pretty bad. But um yeah, essentially it's absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it gets it gets pretty bad. So I had to I had to stomach all that. I also had to Is uh, there more after to this? A doctor in psychology. Mm -hmm. I don't... Uh, well, we can. They sort of chat on. It's not. There's nothing yeah. major. The memes are done. The basic yeah. gaslighting is complete. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's a thing. Um, oh, can you turn the volume down so I can speak okay. normally? Thank you. There you go. Thank you. This is what I was sounding like for the rest of the time. Indeed. Anyway, um, yes. So that all happened, uh, and shit has gone down now. Um. Where is the Novo thing? I had it. Oh, for fuck's sake, Kev. Uh, I can't fucking see it. Anyway, basically, the company he was working with has uh, fucked him off. Which is funny. Uh, Cliff Richard Millennium Prayer, Bromberger. Oh, good stuff. There we go. So, uh, the company Novo, who he had worked with previously... By the way, can you read that? I need to top up my water before we do any more uh, logs. Yeah, so you can read this. Are we doing? Do, do we need to do any more logs? Well, were we going to do the Falcon Raw, where the he actually goes over and touches her? Yeah, we can do if you want. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is what I mean. People in the chat, um, it was basically the most serious charge against him. Okay. So, I think. Well, I'll read this my, one. My feelings, yeah, my feelings on it, she put it out there because she wanted people to know. Okay. She, so, uh, yeah, I will be right back with some okay. more water. Okay. My official Novo response to the Arcadium situation. Arcadium situation. Uh, I will not disclose the information Arcadium initially told me regarding this event, as he told me in client confidence. I was first informed three days ago. He was not remotely truthful with our agency and reported a vastly different situation than these women co uh, collaborated collaborated on the morning of uh, 8 30 which should be 38 whatever based on the knowledge he had given us prior to the women coming out we offered a fun to fund a third party investigation to discern the truth of this in his initial claim needless to say that investigation is no longer required i love dungeons and dragons and have was honored to represent arcadum for his contribution to it i fell in love with arcadum's world of verum as a role player in multiple games of his, a leader in Kalos Row, and, and an agent supporting his business. I am beyond betrayed and disappointed. I am most sorry for the women affected. Many of you I know and collaborated with. I wish I had any idea then of what you were going through. I am tired of having to see tweets from women suffering this kind of abuse with no recourse. Fortunately, and finally, I am in a unique position to show that in this industry, actions can and should have consequences. Matt and I started Novo to stand against predatory ethical practices in this industry. We're making another step in that direction today. We'll ho we wholeheartedly condemn this behaviour and will not suffer it. Effective immediately, we are terminating Arcadum's contract with our agency. We are ending all business and advising our partners to do the same. Uh, this is not 
To our benefit, we will lose $20,000 in merchandise inventory and multiple business deals in circulation. I'm also stepping away from my participation in Arcadum's D&D games and brand permanently. I want to make a clear statement. We stand with the brave women who came out despite the difficulty and pressure of doing so. I encourage, I encourage others to do the same. And I think Christy's back. Is she? I don't know. I can't hear her. Anyway, yeah, so he's, he's um, yeah, fucked himself, which is... You know, I am back. Yes, so that's uh, that's uh, Novo uh, cutting ties. His agency have cut yeah. ties with him, so he's yeah he lost his contract there. Um, right, what was the one you wanted to take a look at? Yeah, can you show me the screen? It starts with an F. It's like Falcona. Or something. Falcona. I'm sorry, I don't know all of these individuals. Um, oh, this is the my story one. Okay, one yes. second. Uh, mm. So yeah, definitely content warning here for sexual assault. Uh, also, just some of the other context from some of the other letters. Sometimes it was just like his abusive methods of like how he interacted with people, including work, which we've kind of skipped over all the complaints about working for him in this mm. for time, <laughs> um, mostly. But it goes to the same sort of pattern. I do remember one woman whose letter or whose yeah, post included that he was asking her to do basically like lap dances in VR. And she like danced for him once, but then after that, she wasn't really comfortable with it. And so, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Which bit should we, should we go in? Just yeah. alternating like yeah. we did before. Uh, this entire document is a trigger warning for sexual assault and abuse. My story. I believe I was forced and groomed into silence about my experience up until this point. Recently, there has been a lot of drama circulating around one Jeremy Black, AKA Glorious Arcadum. I am going to be briefly and concisely describing my experiences involving this person. On the night of uh, November 25th, 2019, I was sexually assaulted by Arcadum in my own home. I invited Arcadum to my home in hopes to help him escape his supposed abusive household setting with his significant other and simply wanted him to have a fun weekend with my old roommate and I. He took advantage of me on the night of the 25th and used my emotional vulnerability to attempt and perform sexual acts with me. The night began pretty normal and all three of us were watching movies. Once my roommate went to bed, Arcadum asked to scratch my back and play with my hair. I was obviously okay with this because he hadn't been intimate with me before this point and I am super friendly in this sense with others. It was only when his hands started wondering where they shouldn't when it became something more. I finally got the courage to get up from the seat I was in. He also stood up and attempted to embrace me very close. I allowed it because I assumed it was a hug, only to feel his erection against my leg. I remained motionless and did not touch Arcadum back in any way, shape, or form. This weird, dry, humping embrace lasted several minutes as he cried into my neck. I could feel him gripping at my shirt and pants and holding me violently and just crying into my neck. Once the first hug finally ended, I pulled away and verbally tried to console him, which I am terrible at in general, about his relationship and home life issues. After a bit of talking and him venting to me, I told him I should go to sleep because I was extreme. it was extremely late in the night. We had plans the next day that we did not get to because I was petrified from this night. He complied and I walked him to his room, which was right across the house from my door. I checked to make sure his sleeping arrangements were good, that he had water, food, and toilet paper, etc. When I went to leave the room, he asked for another hug in the frame of the door. For reference, I'm about 5 foot, 3 inches tall, and around 145 slash 165.8 kilograms in weight. Arcadum is a larger man both in sight, size and height. I agreed out of submission to his emotional distress, which led to him forcing me up against the wall and proceeding with his version of a hug. Again, my body was touched and grabbed at, purposely avoiding my genitals and breasts to a degree. It felt like hours, but it most likely went on for minutes. But the line was crossed when he started kissing my neck and trying to hide it behind crying. I pushed him, his way, and pushed him away as gently as I could and disengaged politely to my room. This was, that was the first night staying in this home, and I locked my door before I went to sleep. My mistake in all those enca these encounters was remaining silent and not telling him to stop. But years of sexual and emotional abuse from older men has taught me to just let it happen and move on. So this is exactly what I did. 
I was terrified not only for my physical safety as he could as he easily could overpower me if I retaliated, but I also feared for my career that was so deeply intertwined in his community. I feared he would spread rumours and lies about me and use my mental illness and past struggles as ammunition. And for all of you reading, you know that my fears were justified. Fucking on. Unlike a lot of other women that have suffered due to this man, whether it was emotional, financially, verbally, or physically, my experiences do not have the screenshots or recordings. I do not have receipts for the marks he left on my skin with his negligence. I tried to tell my story in the past, but got silenced by his ability to crush anyone and everyone he'd want to, and now I finally get to tell my truth. Part 2. The Emotional Abuse This section will be heavily describing and citing the onslaught of emotional and verbal abuse I was put through by Glorious Arcadum. These occurred in 2020-2021 and during a certain conflict involving the project known as Callus Row. I will provide further context on it if people really need to ask and want to see, but to save the document and not make it all about that matter, I am leaving out those details. Arcadum had little to no regard for my emotional well-being during and after this conflict, and I was left to pick up the pieces of a good portion of my role-play career. The only response I got was an lol. I have receipts from consenting parties showing Arcadum blatantly demonising me to several of his other victims in an attempt to keep my voice from being heard. Those will be linked below. To conclude this document that was honestly traumatising to relive and write, I believe I was abused in several aspects by Glorious Arcadum, and I believe he is continuing to get away with these actions without proper consequences. I hope my voice and the onslaught of evidence and information all of you are seeing shows you exactly what kind of person he has been to myself and the other individuals involved. Again, any screenshots posted that are not mine were given consent slash permission to be used in the statement. Thank you. Falcona. Screenshots. Uh, number one, Arcadum demonising and slandering Falcona to Momo. Uh, that's quite small. Can I get that to... Big I enough? think the links are active, yeah. Okay, well I need to... Hang on. Apologies, everybody. Tie the screen. Boom. Right. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do Arcada as well. Uh, Falcona left Callus because uh, Row because I maintained a ruling that her character is dead, and when she told me she was talking, hang on, uh, talking, taking, I think is what. You oh, so taking her priest character with her, and when I said "lol, good luck," she took that personal, like I was making fun of her pain. Then she told someone in a DM, uh, that's direct message, I think, uh, that she was going to try to ruin my career and that I was a sexual assailant. Obviously, I did not do anything of the sort, but I am super stressed out that this environment, it may it may not matter what the truth is. A twit longer, even if it's false, could sully or destroy what I built. Even when I have done nothing wrong, this is going coming from a girl I have talked out of suicide, helped pay for her move and bills on hard times, and have tried to help at every occasion. I'm honestly a little heartbroken that she would threaten me like this. What the actual fuck, man? I'm so sorry you're going through this. I really don't know Falcona that well. Yeah, it's awful. So anyway, I'm trying to relax and not be terrified of what one unstable person is going to try uh, and do. Piece of shit. Yeah. Oh, absolutely awful. <sighs> Jesus. Um, can you... There, he's doing it with another woman who has a um, twit long. Yeah. Durf. Can you read that? Or do I have to go into the thing? Uh, no, I can read that. Okay. So he says, we, whatever that is, uh, might be a while before I get back. A bunch of things happened. I'll have to tell you later. Like what? Just letting you know in case you were waiting on me. I had a panic attack. I've never had one of those before. Sorry to bother you with it. Why did you have a panic attack? For magic? Outside the store, I got a message for, that Falcona is planning to come forward, and I got so mad from all the lies she will most likely tell... So he's trying to get ahead of the nonsense. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I thought how I might lose everything, how people will see me differently. Oh, she's trying that? All because her character died. What a piece of shit. 
Arcadium is shown blatantly deleting slash editing past messages to cover his original intention, which is just, by the way, especially brilliant because he's doing that on Discord where it literally shows you yep. that, you, that it's been edited. Oh, we have the video. Yeah. Um, the first screenshot was a conversation about him assaulting me. I was terrified and it, and brushed it off and even had gotten to a point where I was blamed myself for it ever happening. Fucking hell. Second screenshot uh, has been heavily edited by Arcadium and has a lot of messages deleted in between my own. He just went back in the last few days, it seems, not just for myself, and edited several sexual or romantic messages. If videos of these exact DMs are needed to prove authenticity, you can ask me for them. And then there's, yeah, him being creepy. Yep. Yeah. Um, do, do you want to read through these, or...? Um, what do you think? I, you, I, I, see it's, it, I think we've gotten through the... Yeah, he's an abuser. Yeah, he's, he's an abuser. He's an abuser both physically and emotionally, and yeah. Mm -hmm. But like I say, he has faced uh, at least the financial consequences of his actions. Um, Do you have his, apo his uh, apology? Uh, oh, God, I don't think I do. Uh, okay, do yeah, that came out yesterday, I think. Do you have that? Uh, if you just t uh, type in Ar Arcadum and go to his account, it should be like a top one. Arcadum, okay, my response. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. All uh, right. So before we start, Kevin, what do you think goes into a good apology? Um, firstly, you have to say sorry and mean it, and you show that by explaining why what you did was wrong and what steps you're going to take to try and address the issues that led you to that place in the first place. Yeah, I think ownership and also acknowledgement of the personal harm mm. you did to people, treating them like people, seeing them as individuals probably have a cascade of the people he hurt directly um, and then also the people he was disappointed in or who were disappointed to learn um, about these things um, and, and basically I think it should focus more on others than on yourself yes yeah. so, especially when a lot of the problems uh, arose from the fact that he focused on no one but himself yes exactly okay so I'll do the first a couple of paragraphs. Uh, my response. To everyone. The past few days have been a difficult time for a lot of people, including my family, friends, and the entire community as a whole. For me, it has been a time of personal reflection. There have been many stories and feelings shared about some of my actions over the years within the D&D community. I have been processing a lot and want to address matters as best I can. I realise I will not be able to repair much of the damage that has been done or properly share my full perspective, but I owe an explanation and apology to all those affected. Me? Yep. Okay. The truth is, I have developed and engaged in a wide range of relationships with people over the years, some of them leading into sexual territories in times when I made mistakes and was selfish. I never sought out relationships purely for sexual purposes, and to be absolutely clear, I've never engaged in non-consexual activity. These were relationships that developed as genuine friendships. I greatly value these friendships, and still do. Yet, I have been unfair to many of them, and I am sorry for the hurt that I have caused them. Well, clearly not, because you're still denying it. Yeah, he doesn't mention a single person. Yeah, also, He's... not you didn't engage in non-consexual activities. Well, you're so you're still denying it, then? Mm, yeah, Cause... like hitting, yes, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, rubbing your boner up against a woman and, like, not letting her go for several minutes, that's sexual assault. Yeah, when she's not responding to you in any way and just standing there stiffly, waiting for it to be over, the mm. first time is already a transgression. The second time, you're just basically pushing your luck. You know what you're going to get as an answer. Mm. Anyway. In addition to being unfair to my friends, I've also been unfair to my wife, Tiffany. Who, again, I don't think they're married, are they? Mm -mm, so, no. Okay. Last week, Tiffany became aware of these relationships and my communications with people that crossed boundaries within our marriage. Understandably, she was heartbroken, and I tried to do as much as I could to salvage the situation. This including attempting to edit and delete messages I have exchanged with different people, as well as reaching... So, again, that's not you trying to rectify anything. That's no. you trying to cover your tracks. Mm -hmm. you fucking piece of shit. Like, that's like, we should go, oh, well done. You try to lie further. Fuck's sake. Um, as well as reaching out to them to explain 
I would not be able to continue any sort of professional or personal association. This was a painful experience, and as a result, I have learned and reckoned with many of the mistakes I have made. I did just want to point out that his solution to the problems he caused was to just kick out all of the, anyone he'd had a, a, those conversations with. What, 14 people or 15 people? I can't remember, like, all the contributions. Like, um, I know there was, like, 20 or 21 at the end, but that, that might have included, like, Stearns as well. <clears throat> but he just basically, like, let all those people go. That yeah. is the definition of sexual harassment. Yeah. They got punished because he got caught, yeah. you know? And he doesn't even acknowledge, like how wrong that was to punish those women because he decided to take an interest in them and they didn't respond in the way that he liked mm. oh my god yeah also yeah pa the passive voice thing yeah the damage that was done not even saying damage i did yeah damage exactly. damage was done you know <sighs> um yeah so uh, yeah one of the things i was done wasn't i i'm sorry take a bite of something Okay, well, I'll read on. I want to be clear, I thought. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I regret most is that I've uh, now hurt people who I have greatly cared for over the course of many years. People I have confided in and who confided in me. These are people who have helped me overcome personal challenges when I needed their support and who I have shared truly meaningful experiences with. It's become clear that I've betrayed those friendship, sorry, those relationships, and again, I'm deeply sorry for that. I want to be clear and encourage everyone to support Tiffany during this time. Tiffany has been my trusted, truest friend, even with my mistakes and all the ups and downs. She has shown me a lot of grace over the years. She will always be a part of me and I will always love her. To those, oh, sorry, I can, because you did too, right? I, uh, whatever, I was just going to say, yeah, that's, that um, he's basically, without saying it, saying, oh yeah, she, no, she left me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to those, <laughs> she took the, cheese knife or yeah, whatever. she took the cheese grater <laughs> yeah. what a monster <laughs> to those who have been reaching out i'm sorry that you have been i have been unresponsive i don't know where to begin in explaining everything or apologizing to so many of you i've let down i've removed myself from callus row verum and other D, D spaces as i don't want to cause any further harm in a community that means so much to me i will not be streaming as i continue to reflect on my actions and seek therapy for personal issues I've struggled with for some time. In the meantime, I wish nothing but the best for everyone involved in this situation and the wider community. Arcadum. Oh, Weak. That was pathetic, yeah. Weak. So there's denials, there's passive voice, there's, uh, well, I, I've had a bad time too. Like, yes. Uh, what the fuck, man? That's embarrassing. Fuck you. Yeah, it oh, just yeah. kind of fits his MO, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. And he'll try, I'm absolutely certain he'll try and do the thing of wait for the dust to settle and then maybe come back, you know. Yeah, do a Dave Silverman. Um, True, yeah. Uh, so I guess, yeah, I felt like this, it's not often that we have this kind of, this amount of evidence of this kind of, of behavior and we haven't even touched the surface i mean mm. there are still like another 18 of these yeah. twit bongers that you could go through if you wanted to and i've i think i've heard 14 of them so i really did a deep dive on this and i felt like bringing this up in our show and exposing his tactics um like i said i think it was it's almost like a public service and i want to thank the women who came forward and let their pain be public so that we could understand what happened to them, but also understand how to hopefully better protect ourselves, not just from him, but from anyone who uses those kinds of tactics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think this is um, hopefully a, a lesson that in, in the era of everything being recordable, record it, record, yeah. you, record this shit. Because the only way you will get any semblance of justice and be heard is if you have these receipts. And it shouldn't have to be that way. It shouldn't have to be. This is not like a court of law. Mm -hmm. People should be more amenable to, you know, people in need. But if you're having conversations with this guy, uh, with a, well, it doesn't have to be a guy, a person. It doesn't matter who they are. People. Um, record them. 
If you if you think you're in any way being dealt with poorly, record everything. Everything. Yeah. And I don't, you know, um, I know the women probably judge themselves for not seeing through it, you know, with again twenty twenty hindsight. Yeah. But I'm the the responsibility is with him, ultimately. And some people are more capable of walking away than others and I don't think yeah. you can just expect everyone to have that strength because you don't know their history you can't really judge their ability to um, yeah just walk away from a really important relationship or even a working relationship that is on a career path that they really want it's, yeah, exactly, it's all yeah. sort of fucked up you know exactly yeah. But, it, yeah exactly if you if this guy is the difference between you being able to pay rent and not that that keeps you essentially trapped and I think there was a lot of volunteers, but they did it for like, to feel important, to feel part of the community, to be inside, you know, all of those like emotional benefits of participating in something that was up and coming on Twitch, right? Mm. Uh, and, and yeah, the DMD community from what I've seen has been nearly universally supportive of the women coming forward. Yeah, that's well, that is genuinely positive. But I mean, we'll I suppose we'll keep you up to date with any mm -hmm. developments or whatever. But yeah, this is this is it's grim, but I think it's worth examining because yes. this is the kind of toxic shit. Uh, and I'll, I, I'm going to be talking to some lady peeps coming up in the not too distant future. I'm sort of dealing, you know, trying to schedule stuff because um, it's become more and more obvious that the even on Twitch, which we, I mean. The the hate raid stuff and all of that it's it's not just women obviously but the the space for women is so unbelievably toxic, mm -hmm. and it's good that this is coming to light but it's bad that it was ever allowed to get to this yes. point. Yeah. Um. So I mean, he got away from with it that. by keeping it sort of divide and conquer for a long time. Yeah, you know? they were saying like for over two years he was doing mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And that's the ones we know about. Who God knows what he was like. If if he thought he was worse in the past, what was he like in the past? What the fuck? Yeah. <sighs> well, you... Oh, the grooming part of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. People. We didn't have a chance to go through all of them. Yeah. I mean, people have done four-hour streams on like the first four twit longers, you know, and then another four hours on yeah. the rest of them. But the grooming behavior, it it comes, I think, more in some of the other interactions that we've we've looked at mm. but it's basically this um sort of like creating a sense of intimacy and we're in a very private space and you're a person i can be honest with and and you know like i have to have these walls up and it's basically um don't talk about what we're doing outside of this room yeah it's it's like what a predator does in order to keep a kid from, you know, we've got a special secret. Um, I, nobody else knows this part of me. All that kind of bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's precisely. Yeah, it, it is similar to the way in which a, a child abusers will often operate. That don't tell mommy and daddy. Either because we've got a special secret, or mm -hmm. I will fucking hurt you. It's either a threat or an inducement of some nature, or or it'll hurt mommy and daddy. You'll hurt the community. To be, you know, the the analogy would be, like. That's, yeah, he's clearly being, the fact that he's segmenting these people off. So even though they were friends, they weren't necessarily talking about the abuse that they were getting. Because it was all secret, right? It was all private, yeah. their DMs, their special relationship. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, I mean, just fucking genuinely evil. An evil person doing evil shit. And, I mean, I guess, I guess. Uh, this is really complicated because, yeah, I do think when you describe it, like how we would culturally describe it as evil, I think that that is uh, what you would see. Like that is, it's a bad situation. It's an evil situation. I don't know that he is per se an evil person. I think he has a lot of twisted sense. Uh, his sense of self is, is very um, dark and needy and therefore he consumes people and attention um ad you know, fame whatever um to the point where he doesn't actually see other people's needs other than through the lens of how they relate to him well i would say that is evil i'd say that's an evil thing whether it's necessarily I, something he can yeah i think there's something like a, a clinical control. sort of sociopath who don't have the capacity versus someone who maybe has some seeds in there with some really deep therapy to what? unpack 
I think there's a difference. Where do these patterns come from? I, I'm more sympathetic to someone who is like a genuine psychopath because they they really don't understand that difference. They don't see other people as as worth anything. Whereas uh, even uh, I think unless you're a very very uh, deranged sociopath, you you understand the effect you're having on people. You just don't care. Yeah, you I know? would say that that was his case, but I guess maybe another way to phrase it is that I feel like he's never emotionally got beyond the age of five. Well, that's true. That's and true. Kids are slightly sociopathic in so, that way, yeah. right? So many of these uh, online kind of dude bro twats that I've talked about for many years now, that that's the, yeah, they did all their emotionally developing until about the age of 10. And then they went, well, I know everything about the world now. I don't need to learn. And so much of that was so petty and childish and it was about point scoring. Yeah. Is there just no maturity to that interaction well, yeah, whatsoever? The... Yeah, the thing, oh, no, actually, well, you just don't go to that burger place. Like, she brought yeah. up an analogy, dude. She wasn't talking about fucking burgers. What? I, that's like what you would expect a 10-year-old to say. Some mm -hmm. dumb shit. Like, yeah, he was... It's fucked up. Yeah, but of course, he's anyway. in the body of a 30-year-old man who should know better and can be held accountable. For yeah, he's not, like he's not super young anymore. You can't give him that mm -mm. excuse. Not at all. Um, yeah. So, like I say, we'll keep you updated. Any final, any final thoughts? Because uh, I do need a piss before we get up to bookmarks. Uh, yeah, I guess if you want to take that break. Okay, will do, and you can chat. Through.